All right, so what's going on, people? Welcome back to the Blue Tick Podcast. And opposite me today, we've got Ty Mitchell. He's an ex-boxer who's now coming back into boxing. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, is that yeah, what yeah. we call it? Yeah, you can call it that, yeah. Or pro boxer who's... Back to being a pro boxer. Back yeah. to being a pro boxer because of a little story that we're going to find out today. So let's start it off. Age, tell us a bit about yourself. Hold on, hold on. Before we get into all that, we've got to find out what this podcast is about. This is your first episode, big man. Yeah, True. What's, your, what's the uh, podcast about? Obviously, we see it on your jumper right now, Blue well, Tick Podcast. It's called the Blue Tick Podcast. So, obviously, only verified people are allowed on here. So, obviously, like, when I, when I saw Ty, I was just scrolling through my finger and saw a Blue Tick. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that one would do. Let's grab him on here. <laughs> so, well, no, it is Blue Tick Podcast. Basically means you've got to be verified to come on. Unless you're someone special. If you didn't have a Blue Tick, I'll let you on, bro. Don't worry. Oh, thank you, boy. Yeah, thanks. I thought I was, I was just here for the Blue Tick. Huh? I said I feel privileged. I, I feel privileged to be on here myself. What are you talking about? I ain't got a blue tick. Yeah, the irony. Yeah. The blue shit bucket. Yeah, but I ain't got one. But no, um, what's the word? Where you? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, manifesting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah manifesting yeah, yeah. the blue tick. Fair, and that. Speaking to existence. Blue tick okay. soon come. I couldn't really give a shit about a blue tick. <laughs> <laughs> no, so of course we are here for you to give us a bit of your story. How you? Why you stopped boxing? What happened? And all How of that. How far back do you want me to go? All you know the way. Mean? I found out my childhood. It, no, we want to know... To do with my career, basically. No, I want to go a bit deeper into it. I want to know childhood, what got you to where you was, and obviously what changed and what turned you into who you are today, pretty much. Okay, so childhood just... Um, kind of where was you brought up? What area? Derby. What's it like up there? I'm not from... I'm from London. Yeah, Derby's quiet, man. There's nothing going on up there. I love Derby, but I can't stand London. London... What, you love Derby? I love it, yeah. I love it there, yeah. That's like... It's, you never no. been Dobby? No, he put up a story. I'm in London 10 minutes, I already hate it here. I hate it here, bro. Is it? Oh, this is Essex, but yeah, but like London, Essex, I can't stand it, bro. Why though? What, too loud, too busy? I just don't, think, I just don't get what's good about it. Like, What's good about Dobby? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you what's... Everything that I name that's not good about London, Dobby doesn't have this issue yet. All right, go on. So then. no matter where you go, what time of the day it is, there's traffic jams. You can't drive nowhere. In London? In London, yeah. Okay. Can't get nowhere. There's traffic jams everywhere. All right, agreed. There's speed Definitely. cameras <laughs> everywhere. No matter where you go, there's speed cameras. Yeah, you, got, you don't speed though, so you're good. Yeah, I don't speed. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got ULEZ charges, congestion charges, this yeah. charge, there's, there's that many traffic wardens that just pop out of butchers three, four in the morning to give you a tr- ticket if you're like, yeah, walk away true. from your car. It's just ridiculously expensive to the point where it's like, a million pounds for a one bedroom shared accommodation. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, oh, one bedroom shared accommodation, four grand a month. Like, oh, I'll give it a rest, mate. Like, Derby, we don't have none of this. There's hardly any ever traffic jams. It's got, we've got Westfield Centre, we've got big, like, cities, we've got everything you need there. But we don't have none of these problems. It's reasonably be placed to live there. How far is it from here? Like, how long would it take to get from check? Two and a half hours. Yeah, two and a half, half hours from here, Essex, yeah. Oh, that ain't that bad. Well, it's yeah. just above Birmingham, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Derby is sounds way. far. Yeah, Derby, no, I bought my BM from there. So when people say Derby, it sounds yeah. like... I'd Where else did you get it from? Stratstone, BMW. Oh, okay, you got it from the BMW, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bird, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Stratton. Not this one, the other one. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. White one, 3 series. But, um, yeah, man, that's, that's not bad. So, what was uh, upbringing like in Derby then? Quiet? Yeah, rough. like, you have the areas like you do in no matter where you live. Um, you have the areas where there's, like, a bit more crime and stuff. But as a whole, compared to big cities, Derby's not a big crime city. There's... A murder once in a blue moon. You don't really hear murders in Derby. Like if there's a murder in Derby, it's like it's something serious. Deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. Like it, it doesn't really happen much. Um, and I was blessed enough to grow up in a good area, man. I grew up in like a village called Little Eaton. Okay. I grew up with my mom, my, my older brother and sister, and then a few years later, my little brother. Um, and yeah, man, I was. You don't understand as a kid. You don't know. We just you just growing up on. You don't know what's poor, what's rich, what's not. But we lived in a nice area. We was poor though. We lived in a council house. So my mum was a single mum on benefits. Um, but yeah, man, uh, it was a good upbringing, more or less, like, um, compared to a lot of people from other areas, poverty stricken areas, I grew up in a nice area, safe area. We used to just play out on the streets and stuff. Or, can't do that no more. Yeah, can't do that no more. Like, when I grew up, like, all the all my neighbours, like, kids, so my friends and all stuff, we'd all just play on the street, we'd go out in the village, of it, like, walk a mile by ourselves, we're like, eight, nine years old, and we'd just be out playing, and it's just safe back then. We'd all be in each other's houses, all, it, it was like a big community, we could just go in each other's houses and stuff. It's not really like that no more, so I'm glad I grew up in the era that I did. And then what age did you, like, get into boxing and stuff? Because, obviously, that's what you're into now. Yeah, so my dad was a professional boxer before me. Okay. Um, so, naturally, it was just, like, when he finished boxing, he retired, 
he set up his own boxing gym. So I was just kind of in the gym from like seven. So mum and dad weren't together? Nah, I don't ever really remember my mum and dad being together. Okay. So I've got a little brother that's like a lot younger than me, but so they must have gone back for a brief period, but I don't really, I don't ever really remember him. There's like a small time I can remember him being in the house a bit, but it wasn't for a long period of time. Um, so yeah, now mum and dad wasn't together. I moved, yeah, so my dad um, had a boxing gym, so I was in the gym from like seven. Then I moved out of my mum's house and moved in with my dad and stepmom when I was 10 or 11. And then, but yeah, so I moved to mum and da- to my dad and stepmom's when I was 10, 11. So when I was basically in a six weeks holiday from going into primary school to secondary school, that's when I moved. Um, and I kind of started boxing a bit more because I lived with my dad then. Yeah. Um, Did you ever have a passion for it or was you kind of forced into it? So I was never forced, but it's just something to do because I didn't really do it. But I've never really had a mad passion for it. I just did it because... I was naturally talented. Kind of followed your dad at his well. Yeah, and I was, just in, the, I was in the gym anyway because I'd have to, when I finished school, I'd have to go to the gym because that's where my dad was and then I was just thought, oh, I might as well do it. Sometimes I'd do it on and off, um, but I'd, I started fighting amateur when I was like 11. Um, but I didn't really take it too seriously, to be honest. It was just like more of a hobby than a, than a, something that I thought I would. You must took it serious because you didn't do too bad at it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but like, so in amateurs, it was different. So amateurs, like I would win some, lose some. I wouldn't really like, like I'd, I'd always be talent, I'd, I'd natural talent and natural ability, but I'd never train hard. So like, cause I hated training, but I didn't mind <laughs> fighting, but then I didn't want to miss nothing at the same time. So then I'd be like going toward like the parties after school, staying up all night. Like this is when I'm a bit older, like 14, 15, no, like about 13, 14. So there'd be like parties, you're getting on with girls. This is like when it's all new to you, there's girls, are you trying to kiss them and fondle them and Basically all this. Basically just go through puberty. Yeah, young, puberty you know, 13, 14, <laughs> active. <Yeah. laughs> so, yeah, so it's them times there, so then like I was just not really taking it, and then I probably, I'd always beat people the first round, maybe round and a half, and then I'd just gas out, be knackered, and it's like, <laughs> so a lot of them I get outpointed. Um, I, won, I definitely won a lot more than I lost, but I didn't do um, as well as I was capable of doing. Um, and in your pro career, what was that like? As in- set, yeah, so you know what, so I was still young, so I turned pro at 18. That's young. Yeah, young, so I turned pro at 18. And it was the same. I didn't change. I just didn't have no passion for it. I just did it just for the sake. It's kind of like everyone just assumed that's just put me. Is I just because your dad done it. Me. They all just kind of. It said, wasn't even because my dad done it so much. I think just because I started boxing from so young, so it was like eleven. Now I'm like eighteen, and it was just like a natural progression to just turn pro. Um, but yeah, I didn't take it serious. I was still going out, not training, this and that, and the same thing happened. Um, to take, not respecting my opponents enough, so I'll be beating them up for a few rounds, and then I'll be f- nothing left in the tank, and then they'll just they just point me. Points. Yeah. Just, so. just to go back to something, Ty. Yeah. Obviously, you knew both your parents growing up then, but yeah. they, they didn't. They weren't together. No, no. Did that make you feel any type of way? I didn't know any different. No. Didn't frustrate you or anything like that. So. I don't think so. I just don't. I think you don't know what you can't miss. It's like, it's like. I, um, I can relate to that part because obviously my mom and dad weren't together when I, I was born, and I think. I think at like one they split up or something. So I never knew different. Yeah. So when people say that to me, they're like, oh, sorry to hear mom and dad ain't together. I've never really taken yeah. offense to that. To me, it was just like, all right, yeah, sweet. Like, Do you know what? I actually don't know this about you, yeah, but obviously I know your, your parents aren't together, right? Yeah. But I, know, and I also know you grew up with your mum. Yeah. So when did you start chilling with your dad? Oh, I said, it ain't really meant to be my podcast, but I'll give, <laughs> I'll give a little <laughs> no, bit of a conversation. Into, into, into so from about, like when I was born to about, 10, I, I saw my dad like on the weekends, whenever, he was always, always busy working. Oh. All I knew from a young boy was my dad, mum always used to say, dad's working, dad's working, dad's working. And then me and my dad stopped speaking for a few years. We had just family shit happen. And then I remember I got a newspaper sent. I was in Cyprus because I was moving to school when I was in year seven. I had mad dramas at school, got left school. Left school in Cyprus? No, no, my mum pulled oh. me out of school and I weren't in school for about six months. So she moved me to Cyprus with my grandma because I was getting in too much trouble. Like it was all it's a podcast, whole like a whole things a podcast. Mm. And um, I got a letter sent over to me in Cyprus about my dad in the newspaper. And I thought, bloody hell, that's good. But like at this point, I didn't want to speak to him. Well, what was it? He was one of the most successful property developers in Kent. I was on. Yeah, he was in the newspaper, front page. Yeah. I got sent it through it in the bin. I thought, oh, you know what? Nah, I'm not even interested. I don't care about it. And then come back. I think I was about 15, 16 now. I found out he had a barbershop. 
So I thought, all right, let me go up there, like get a trim, you know. At least I got to pay for one. It's fine. And went up there, got a trim. That was what Barkingside one then. No, Harlow. Oh, Harlow. Okay, okay. So that opened six, seven years ago. So yeah. So I went up there, and then just started like chilling with your dad, and then. I don't know, it's just... So you know, what, did you tell him that you're going, you're coming to the barbershop? You know, of course, I didn't just turn up there. Well, I thought you might no, just do started, a reunion. We, we, we ran out yeah, a few times, went yeah. out for di- dinner and stuff, then we, I started chilling with my dad. And okay. then from then, literally, we've just become best friends. So for me, when, especially back to the point I said, I've never known different. So when people are like, oh, you know, oh, sorry to hear about your mum and dad. I was like, sorry for what? What are you talking about? Like, it is what it is. I don't really... Like, if my mum and dad was to tell me they were to get back together now, I'd be mortified. I'd be like, what? I'm like, no, you're not. I hate it. 100%. Like, no way, no way on yeah, this planet. Horrible, yeah, horrible, No way. They could never. No yeah. way. Which sounds mad to people. Uh, your mum and dad together. So yeah. See, imagine like you saying, oh, I don't want my mum and dad together. It's mad to you. Mm. Because we've grown up, it'd be weird. I imagine, oh. I'd no, just no be way. thinking, yeah, this I wouldn't let weird. it happen. I wouldn't let it happen. Yeah. Like, genuinely. I know yeah. it sounds bad. My dad's probably watching. His mum's probably watching. It's like, you little shit. <laughs> but no, no chance. No yeah, way. No, I, I just couldn't. It would be yeah. weird. I'd be like, what? What are you lot on? Yeah, it's not. But I guess I always feel like it, um, it's definitely better for a family community if the parents stay together, but that's considering the parents get on. I feel like it has the, such a good impact on children. You see, if two parents get on and they genuinely love each other and kids grow up and see it, that's how a woman loves a man and that's how a man loves a woman. I think that's the most beautiful thing you can do, especially for your children. But also, if you don't, listen, no, life's not perfect. And if it's not working out, sometimes it's better to split up. But I think if it's, if you are lucky enough to be brought up in a house where your mum and dad are together and they genuinely love each other, I feel like you have a lot better character growing up, especially a female, on how she views... Like, I've noticed a lot of women that have daddy issues and they Men use, as well. Men yeah, as yeah, well. men. But I'm saying from with women that have daddy issues, I, I, I see them look for sex for... They're very... I find them more susceptible to get sex. To, and it's not even because they're hoes. They just want to be loved and... They want to be wanted. They want to be cared for. Yeah, like someone to yeah, give them yeah. that manly... Exactly, yeah. And it's not even that, like, oh, yeah, the holes and this and that. It's not. It's like a childhood trauma that they're trying and to... And I think it's, no one knows it either. In yeah. the sense that a woman would never admit, oh, yeah, you know what, I've got daddy issues. Yeah, no way. Or a man. Like, I'm not going to sit here and violate women. But as in... Oh, man, I, I've got mummy issues, bad. So it affects me in certain ways. Do you get it? I don't really have a temper. I've never once in my life lost my temper, which people find mad. You've never, never had a temper? Never lost my temper yet in my life. Really? Not in a boxing match? No, that's the worst place to lose your temper. You don't lose your temper in a boxing match, you'll get knocked out. Mm. That's what your opponent wishes you yeah, for. Yeah, no, that's, that's what my co- when I was boxing, that's what my coach said. He goes, never get angry. Yeah, no. Never. That's like me, though. I don't, think I've, I don't think in my life I've ever been angry. Yeah. No, I I've been angry. Oh, no, I've no, definitely no. been I've, angry I've, a few I've times, my, but I've never lost my temper. I can't recall a point in my life where I've ever been anything but calm. No, wow. I wish. Like, You're not stressed at some point. I, yeah, but never angry, never oh, yeah, no, frustrated. I wish never, for a peaceful life, yeah? I wish for a peaceful life. I wish everything was just sweet as, but I lose. I can lose my temper instantly. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been on the phone to you when you're driving and the man will just cut yeah. you up and bro it will be like yo Raheem listen I'm call you back <laughs> <laughs> yo I gotta deal with something I'll shout you in a sec bro yeah no I don't I get angry people get, can wind me up and I'm like, <clears throat> like but I've never like mm. like switched and just gone ah, like, they've gone nuts you know what I mean right, like, quite, I've got a question though, like, then regarding that people obviously don't know what I'm gonna ask but obviously you went prison right yeah inside never lost your temper no just stayed cool the whole way. Yeah, like one more, lose my, like, lose my No temper. one ever tried being rude, never had a fight yeah, in there. Yeah, but I've had fights in there, but I'm always, it's clinical. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm calm. I get it's a yeah, situation. But that is from your childhood. Where you've been boxing, follow it, like yeah, as in your yeah, dad yeah. trained you from a young, young age on how to defend yourself. You probably look at someone and think, you know what, it's not worth it. Yeah, I know yeah. that I can... But no, 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 you say that, yeah. So this is different. So it's only since I've got older where I can walk away from a fight. Like now, if someone come up to me in the street, put it on me, you're punk, you're a pussy. You say, yeah, go, good luck, bro. Ah, see. see you later. Don't, and it actually don't bother me. Before I went to jail, I would never start it. If you want it, let's go. You can let's get go. it. Let's get go. it. No yeah. problem. And I wouldn't be angry. I'd be like, let's go then. I'll smoke them and then Leave. walk Just off. Just cut. <laughs> Just like normal. Just like walk off like, yeah, and then carry on my cup. Because probably because like you say, I boxed from so young. It was natural. Violence is normal to me. Yeah. I box and I've never got, it's like, oh, I hit you, you hit me back. It's more like a, it's a sport. Do you know what I mean? So, and the thing is though as well, even when I was training for the fight, you, you go in that zone where people are, you, so let's say you're about, I had an argument in a club and while I was in training for my fight and everything I was looking at, I was lining him up. I was thinking, okay, if I throw that right, have boom. Like it, it goes through your head, especially yeah. when you're training and you can't control it, especially when you're young as well. Everything 
that someone does, you're sitting there, you're thinking, okay, if I do this now, that happens. I do this, that happens. But obviously, as you get older, you can say it from experience. Now, you're a lot more mature. You can turn around and say, you know what? It's not worth it. Yeah, I don't care. Like, at the end of the day, well, your opinion doesn't pay my bills. Your opinion yeah. doesn't put my, fun, my son through school. Your opinion doesn't... Your opinion doesn't do nothing for my um, life. Do you know what I mean? If you, okay, you think I'm a pussy, cool, I'm a pussy. Like, what does that mean to me? So again, yeah, like, people's opinions really don't mean shit to me, bro. Like, I don't care. Like, all right, then if but you, you think, did. Yeah, when I was younger, yeah, because yeah. I was so insecure. Like, oh, if I walk away, everyone's going to think I'm a pussy. But who gives a shit? All right, cool, even if you think I'm a pussy, what, how does that change my life? Okay, I'm a pussy. I'm still going to go yeah, home. No, I'm, I'm still in that transitioning stage. Yeah. I'm still in that stage of my life. But where, you're still young, though, remember? Yeah, I'm still in the stage where. I'd love to be able to walk away from every single battle, every single fight, but to me, it's like... Don't get it twisted with humans, bro. Yeah. It's, it's someone ego as well. Yeah, yeah. We've got an ego. ego. I'm not going to let someone just fully violate me and just thingy, but I think after hearing your story today that obviously you're going to tell us, I think that might change. Yeah, it changed me, bro. I obviously watch your podcast and that podcast, every single time, I know you probably don't even believe it, but every single time there's been an altercation with me and something happening, I actually think back to your story. Yeah. I swear to you. Yeah, see, I'm, that's what, see, that's that. Do you know his full story? No. Oh, you're going to hear it today. Yeah, I want to hear it. Serious that. story. Like, yeah, that's special. That, 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 that warms my heart because it means the reason I did the podcast is working, man. Like, you're saying, like, you thought of my story when you wanted so to do it. So many times, and I thought to myself, you know what? Like, my mum, because my mum's been in the funeral business. And so, back to that thing then, where I always, I've always thought to myself, whenever, like, I only watched that podcast, what, a month ago? Probably two months ago? When did it come out? Yeah, a couple of months ago. Yeah. I watched it then and I thought, oh, one, one. Listen, tell us a bit about the story. People on here are watching, thinking, what story were you not talking about? Tell us what happened. Yeah, so I try and break it down for you. Start so, from the beginning. Tell no, us. No, hold on. We're too soon into that one. We're too soon into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, oh, we, obviously, we just talked about a boxing career. We're still 18 years old right now. No, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. True, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We When was that that happened? What I age? Wasn't, I wasn't much older. Uh, 20. Okay, so there's only two years. Uh, we've got two years gap to fill. Uh, sorry, yet. go on, fill in the two years gap. Me. Go on, what happened we'll from there to wait. there? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, so where was we then? 18. 18, what yes, happened? I your boxing 18, career. Yeah, I just, I, like, I, uh, what was your record? I had 5 one, three. Five, one, three. Yeah, lost two. And the two of us did the same thing, not taking it serious, man. And getting out of point head and getting tired and just to get them getting above me. Was you ever scared of losing? Yeah. So why? Do you know what it is? Because I was stupid enough to think that... I can't I, lose. Not even... I never thought I couldn't lose. I was stupid enough to think my, my talent would carry me through. And there's a saying, and this is how stupid it is. The, big, the, on, the slogan of our gym is hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. And that was a prime example of it. I didn't work hard. I was a child as well. I wanted to kind of live my life. I didn't, I didn't even love boxing. I didn't even like it. You just you know, done it. I just done it just for the sake of it, just because it was like I was, was good paid from it. And I, what I, I had natural talent. Put him. What about now? Yes, and that's different. Now, it's not my favourite sport, funny enough. Um, what is? Golf. Golf? Golf? Yeah. So done. Golf? Yeah. Not Serious? to watch, to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah what, top golf. golf or actual proper golf? No, proper golf. But yeah. I can't lie, I hate golf. Yeah, yeah I, I can't golf. lie, I love swinging the golf bat. Yeah, yeah. See, you lot are such calm and relaxed people. Do I you know can't. What it is? I haven't got energy like, for it. Because I've lived such a mad life. That's no, sure. Everyone's lived a mad life. Like everyone has their own thing. But like for me, like my my life's been so chaotic. I can just go when I'm playing golf. Yeah, that's your zone. It's just beautiful, chill. like nice fields in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you probably got so many in Derby as well because Derby's nothing but Greenland, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> loads of there's loads of them. Golf, I've never that's rated nice. it. Never ever rated See what it. See, it is. I was never really. I just went on the driving range, just find it a bit fun, and then I played on the course, and I was addicted ever since. Like, is it? Once you learn, once you can actually play a little bit, like, yeah. you're still gonna be shit compared to most people. But once you can play a bit. And you learn how to hit the ball, you're addicted. What you are you saying? Are you on the level where you're wearing the white glove and all that as well? Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. No way. I could never. Could never. Yeah, could no, never. I can. I can go around and play like good. Like I can play decent. Yeah, now, but I've been playing it a couple of years now. Um, but yeah, no, boxing's not my favorite sport. But it's it's kind of hard to explain my my feelings towards boxing. I like boxing. Hate training. Hate dieting. Don't like training. Don't like dieting. Um, but. I think boxing is all is part of me. Like people say, oh, I'm bigger than boxing. I'm not. I I did. I won't retire from boxing. Boxing won't retire me. I retire from boxing. I'm bigger than boxing, etc. Boxing doesn't define me, and it doesn't define me. There's a lot of players to me, but boxing is all of. But basically, boxing is the only thing that I'm good at in this world. Do you know what I mean? So boxing can give me my family 
I, if, if my career goes how I expect it to go and the potential I believe I have in myself and I can get to, it will give me the opportunity to retire my family. My son will never have to worry about ever going broke. Because really, I've got a son and that's the only thing I worry about is thinking, I want to be able to... How old is your son now? Six. Six. And I just want to think, like, I don't want to ever be a time where I'm never going to be able to provide for you. Do you know what I mean? If there's something you need, I'd, I just want to have that financial security. And I also want to buy my family a lot of things. Do you know what I mean? And I also want to do a lot of charity work. And boxing is the only way I can see me doing that. Um, but also, the bigger reason is is to say there's a lot of people that doubt me in my life, school teachers, this, that, and the other. And I believe that when, hmm? oh, <laughs> and I believe that when I um, make it in boxing, it's kind of like a I told you so kind I of thing. I told you so. I done it. The boy come good in the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like before. But are you gonna take it serious now? Yeah, no, I take boxing serious now. Well, I say I say take it serious. I take it is. So it's been hard for me because I've not had a professional license for seven years. Uh, so, Where is that? How long you're not allowed one for? No, that's not how long I've not had one for. I was put out recently, so like I could do all because you didn't apply to it, or no, I was on license, prison license, okay, remember, so okay. I couldn't get licensed. So I I could do on licensed boxing, which there is some good unlicensed boxes out there. But it's just not as, what you want to do. It's not pro level. There's some of them that are like on a mediocre pro so level. So you're pro now again. You got your license. Yeah. What well, I'm done. saying is I didn't take it as serious as I did before because I wasn't boxing high level fighters. So I'd have 13 fights, I'd knock 12 out. And w- I wouldn't want to knock 12 out. Unlicensed. Now, unlicensed, yeah. Um, some of them was good fighters, man. Especially the one I went to points with, he was a tough fight. But um, he's just like, a, he's just like a wrestler kind of guy. He's just okay. like a very physical fight. Um, but yeah, now, that's what I'm saying. You've been to, uh, look at all this food in this so restaurant. So this, this is your first pro fight? <laughs> No, no, it'll be my first pro fight back. Yeah, of course. Yeah, your yeah. Pro, pro, first pro fight since you got your license. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, you just come down to the restaurant, you ate the food, and you told me you're on a keto diet. See, that's how you know I'm taking yeah. because my Achilles heel is food. One thing, I don't have no addictions in life. I'm not addicted to nothing. <laughs> you see, food, food, drunk food, it's that's, your weakness. That's, that's my weakness. But today, even I said, look, I can only have 10 grams of carbs a day. I said that's the... When is your fight? I've got two scheduled, one for October the 1st and one for sometime in October. But these two are abroad and then I should be fighting. October the 1st and another one, in, two in October? Yeah. Two? Yeah. Bit but quick, huh? That's nothing, but when they're on licence, I box three times in one night. Three times in one night? Yeah, well, I've done that twice. Did you win all three? Yeah, not, I've never lost in on licence. The first time I did all three, I knocked all three out. And then the second one, I knocked the first two out and then I went to points in the last one. All right, question with regarding boxing and... I don't know how, if I'm going to word this correctly, but do you feel like you need to kind of complete boxing to close that chapter in your life of what happened previously? No, I don't think boxing and what happened in my life was... Do you not put them together at all? No. That was just, just a, that, that, that's, you being out on a night and what happened yeah. happened. So that, that, that's just my private life and my boxing is my business life. Do you know what I mean? It's just different. It's just, do you know what I mean? It's, I don't it happened. Me. What the reason I want to complete boxing is I don't have complete boxing I want to just do as much as I'm physically able to do if I don't become world champion I fully believe I've got the capability of becoming world champion I've sparred plenty of them and as, long, as long as you have a bit more oomph into it no, oh yeah it is what it is yeah, if yeah. I do it no, I no, yeah so that, that, now I take it serious because I've got my professional license like now yeah, I've got to take it serious yeah exactly but I feel like if I get as far welcome as back, that, mm, welcome back <laughs> welcome back mate I feel like if I get as far as yeah, like I said, it's not to feel like a, um, I can close a chapter on my life. I just feel like I can. Only, I want to know what I could have done, and I don't want to sit back as an old man and think, you know what? Well, the thing is, you're still young. You're not. You're not old. No, but so boxing you, terms, I'm getting on. Yeah, boxing terms, you I'm are. Thirty-one. Huh? Like, you know, most boxers retired 34, 35. But in three years, you can do a lot. Yeah, you can do a lot. I'm not going to retire then because I've not got no miles on the clock. Luckily, so I'm starting late. So I'll have a bit more longevity. Yeah, true. But having said that, like I think I've got till probably thirty-eight. So I've got enough time. If I'm not going to do nothing in five, six years, I was never going to do nothing. So I just want to see how far I could get. Inshallah, we'll make it to world champion and I'll be able to make money to retire my family. And, family. and that's the goal, man. And I feel like, especially with my platform, I can let people learn from my mistakes, especially in the boxing stage. I can let people learn from my mistakes and also I can shed a good light on Islam because I feel like I've not brought that bit up about the Islam. We're, we're going to move into that. We're missing parts out here. We're missing parts. We need to rewind about 11 years now. You're talking about 31. If yeah, we no, go no, back, no. If we go back 11 years to 20, that obviously that's your highlight of your life. A, a highlight in... A negative way. In a negative way. Yeah. But there's positive to it. Yeah, of course. No, no, no one's, you can't ever turn around and knock. Oh, we ain't spoken about this yet. No. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I was yeah, waiting yeah. for you. Because 
you can't turn around and say it was negative because, like you said, you wouldn't have found Islam as well. And that's a major part to the story as well. What yeah. I want to know as well, just, just a quick one before we get to that. What was your life leading up to the chain of events at that point? What was my life like? Yeah. So, I was just boxing. So basically how I lived my life was I was just like, train as much Ish. as I could be asked to. You know <laughs> okay, I think, I think probably the best way to probably understand it is with the story and whatnot, because I don't even know where, how, when, Tell how. us the week. No, tell us the Yeah, I'm going to just hours. tell you how my life was leading up to it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, like, yeah. I'd train the, like, when, if I had a fight coming up, I'd train for a few weeks before. Not mm. hard, not as hard as I should. I'd go out, rave, get drunk, be with birds. Just that average life for a 19-year-old, I guess. 19, 20. I can't remember if I was 19 or 20. I think I was 20. Um, and just, yeah, just living a, just an average, normal life that a kid does, lived at home and was just living for the weekend kind of thing. Um, had a boxing match on a Saturday night. Lost because I was unfit and didn't train properly. So I was, but this one here, this one hurt me though. So like I was down about this one. This one I was like, yo, I'll never lose again now. Like I'm actually gonna take boxing. So you got soon. a hunger for it? Yeah, like it, that, that, that one hurt me. That's why I thought, you know what? Why did that one particularly hurt you? I did don't, you train don't, hard? Did the opponent school you or like? No, he didn't even school me. Do you know what it was? It just was like, it, the fight got stopped, so what happened was I was fighting him in a... So to be fair, I was 20 years old. I was inexperienced as it is. And the guy was like 20, I don't know, maybe 25 or something. Had 10 fights, one night, knocked his last five out. Someone like me should have never even been no, in there fighting no him in the way. first place. I was a kid, I was inexperienced, etc. Boxed him first round, uh, beat him, in, I dropped him in the first round, um, even his second, smoked him in the third round, smoked him in the fourth round, flat, gassed out. Caught me with a shot in the fifth round, like I took, a, like I wobbled a bit, landed on the ropes, and I bent over and he hit me with like two kidney shots. So I took a knee, and then I jumped up and then the ref stopped it. I was like, "What are you doing?" You know what I mean? Like I was actually all right, but that's probably why it hurt. Yeah, that hurt more. And because you dropped him as well, you knew you had the power to stop yeah, the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that's probably why you. Thought, you Shit. say that. You know what? I say that. I think when I, if I'm being honest, because I tried to keep it as honest as I can. When I dropped him in the first round, he was he was off balance, but I hit him as he was off balance. Because in the third and fourth round, I was pepping him with big shots. And it was hurting him, but he it wasn't. Drop him. I had no man strength as a boy. I had no facial hair, yeah. nothing. Like, I had no no moustache, no nothing. I just looked like a little boy. I looked about <laughs> 17 years old. I was like a little kid. Yeah, but talent um, as well. Yeah. Huh? That's what it comes down to. Yeah, talent. I had talent, but I just had no man strength. So I'm a boy fighting a man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, if I'd have done that now, I'd have put him absolutely to sleep. Do you know what I mean? But as a kid, do you know what I mean? So, um, that one hurt me, though, man. Just everything leading up to it. I think I let myself down. Because I should have trained harder and I wouldn't have been so tired. Literally, I remember fighting thinking, I, can't, I can barely stand up here and I'm trying to fight it out. Um, so, yeah, that hurt. And then I just thought, yeah, I'm going to take it serious. So that was on a Saturday night. And then on a Tuesday, I seen one of my friends who went to uni in Leeds. And he was, like, trying to get me to go out on a student night out with him. Didn't want to go. I was down and stuff. But he kind of persuaded me to go, so I went. <laughs> one of them ones, yeah. Yeah, you know them ones. There's birds going, that's what he said. He <laughs> probably come to you and goes, Yo, I this guy's like, coming. Yeah, did, 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 and did, you did, thought, Bro, I've got to go, I've got to go. How far does Leeds from Derby? About an hour. Okay. Right. Yeah. You don't used to go out. Yeah, now this was just like a one hour for don't normally okay, go. Okay, like, yeah. okay. Um, so we went, basically, we've gone to his student accommodation, met a couple of his friends I went uni with, a couple of guys I already knew from Derby. We've gone out. After the night out, we've left the club. Um, and then we Everything one. was cool. Yeah, nice night cool. out, good yeah, night out. Yeah. What time did you leave the club? What time did you leave the club? Oh, I can't remember, but it was over 10 years ago. Oh, okay, Student cool. night out, probably like what, 2 o'clock or something. Okay, okay cool. You drunk? Um, I'd had a few, but I wasn't drunk. Okay. I, don't, I can't remember. If I'm being truthful, I could be. I don't feel like I, I don't remember thinking oh, I'm bollocks. Okay. Um, so we've left the club and then we've seen one of his guys that he's um, in his student, he shares a student a common with arguing with this other guy. These two are getting into it. I've walked past them. I've gone into the takeaway. I'm in a takeaway. Ordered my food. Me and my bridge in. And two girls. Then these two have come in. They're still arguing or whatever. And then you know both of them? I don't know either of them. Oh, you don't? Strangers to you? Yeah, it's oh, basically not, like I met one mates, of them before. We, I, yeah, so I met one of them before we went out okay. in it. Because we went to a student house and one of them's one of his So m- mutual friends, let's call them. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. But one of them's a mutual them. friend and the other one we've never met. So these okay. two are just arguing with each other uh-huh. about something. Now this guy, then they start throwing shit at each other, like and then arguing with each other. So then um, the other guy that I'd never met before rang his mates. So then his mates have come in. So then we've also all gone outside. One of them ones. That's going to be a long night. Yeah. So then these two that was arguing ended up having a fight. And then um, my mate's housemate got battered. This other guy lit him up, bro. Smoked him. 
Um, and then... And at this point, you're not involved. I'm not involved. Like, you're man, stood yeah. back. I, doing I, was, I was actually trying to stop it. I was like, yo, allow it, man. No, like, it's over nothing. You man yeah. arguing over nothing. Right, right. So these like lighting each other up. Um, he, this guy just lit him up to bat at him, basically. His face was mash up. Then a verbal altercation. That, that's finished. Then he said something to me. I've said something back. Now, me and him are having like a verbal altercation. The guy that's just punched your, the roommate the up? The mutual friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now the guy that's punched him up, me and him are in a, uh, a verbal altercation. Then we've come close together. So I've like pushed him in his face like that. He's jumped over, jumped back up. He fell over, jumped back up. I'm going to like do this and do that and whatever. So then me, my friend, and then his mate, the one that's been battered, have walked to the, get in a taxi. The taxi won't let us in because he's got blood all over him. He said, now you're going to mess my taxi up. You can't get in. What a world, isn't it? Yeah, so as them to, as we're trying to get in the taxi still, this guy's walked past and said, oh, I'm going to wash my hand and come back and knock you out. So we like walk past each other again, then when the verbal altercations come, I'm saying shit to him, he's saying shit to me. Um, and then he's like, come at me like with his mouth. I don't know if he was going to like headbutt me, hit me, bite me, whatever, but he's come to me like aggressively, isn't it? With like his mouth. I, I remember thinking he, oh, he's going to bite me, so I stepped back and hit him. He's dropped, his bridge jumped over, hit me. I've hit his bridge and his bridge has dropped. I walked off, got in a taxi, we went back to the student flat, um, house, sorry. Next minute, about half an hour later, the police have stormed the place and locked me up, the guy that got beat up and my friend up. So I'm thinking, you know, I'd like, probably yeah, yeah. Did, when you dropped him, did, like, they didn't not get up from the run? I didn't look. Okay. I just hit him, hit him and walked up. Okay, okay. I don't remember, like, I didn't, I didn't even look back, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so then they've locked us up. I'm just thinking, oh, someone's probably got us up in public with all other fight. He's beat him up. He's them me and these two have had an altercation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then they've locked us up. Pause all in different police stations. I just went for him to come. I'm thinking, well, he can't really press. All I remember thinking is if he pressed charges on me, yeah, he went for me first. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking like <coughs> one. He kind of half went for me first. It was. 50, 50, I don't. Wait, I don't like to say he went for me first. We went for each other really. That like he come at me, but I kind of went back at him straight yeah. away. So we was both. I don't want to sit here and put the blame on him. Was both as bad as each other in that situation. Um, but I just remember thinking, well, he beat the other guy up first, so if he tries to press charges, I'm he's going to get in this himself. Yeah, so that's all I remember thinking. Then the police was like, but then I, normally you, it's 24 hours and I yeah. see you out. But like another, like then they've come and started taking all my fingerprints and all this. And I'm thinking, why are they doing all this? This is a bit much. What's going on? Yeah, so t- taking all my finger, not my fingerprints, sorry. They always take your fingerprints, my fingernails, sorry. Clipping my fingernails. You started just clipping your fingernails? Yeah, for forensics. Wow. So you thought, shit, what's going on? Yeah. And so you had no legal advice at this point? No one's, You no, ain't been interviewed, nothing? No. I'd, um, I've been arrested, but I ain't been interviewed. And what was your arrest charge? Um, Section 18, I think. Okay, so you didn't... No one said nothing to you? You just thought, all right, cool. No, I just thought... Um, what was it? I can't even remember. What, I, don't, I can't even remember <laughs> if it was Section 18. It might have been... A, I can't even remember what it was. Um... Then they're like, oh yeah, he's on life support machine and he's like, and he's dying and that. I'm like, from what, like, huh? Well, this is in your interview now? No, this is, yeah, in the interview, they're like, yeah, well, he's on a life support machine and he's deteriorating this, that, and the other. So I'm like, hey, like, all I did was I only hit him once, do you know what I mean? Like, well, one of the guys that you dropped? The, yeah, the first one I hit. Oh, the one okay. I beat up the guy, the first, the one yeah, I was yeah, fighting okay, first. Um, so I'm thinking, yo, like, yo, this, this is, is a like, bit much. Yeah, I didn't like, serious, I just know, yeah. So then another day's gone past, and they, I was ended up being in there for like a, about three days or something. Um, so gone to court. They remanded me in custody. Um, so I've gone to jail. I'm remanded, and then I remember speaking to my parents on the phone. I saying, oh yeah, like they've had word it's getting better, and that he's like coming out of it, or whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. Couple of days later, I rang my mum on the phone. My mum was just crying. I'm like, oh, what's up? She's like, you've not heard? I was like, not heard what? She's like, oh, he's died. I was like, who's died? She's like, oh, yeah, the guy that you've hit is dead. He's died. So, selfishly, the first thing I thought is, I'm never coming out of prison. That's all I thought. Oh, I'm murdered now. Yeah. Or like, I've killed someone. I'm never going to get out of jail. That's all I thought. I didn't even really, selfishly, I didn't think about him or his family. I just thought, I'm never coming out of prison. Yeah. But that's the first thing most people would think. Yeah, probably. I don't know if everyone's different, but I just remember if I'm being honest, like I tried to keep it as honest as I can. Selfishly, I thought that. Just asking something on that point there. The first day in prison. I've right. been to prison before. Oh, you've been in prison before? Yeah. You, you missed that part. Yeah. <laughs> you, I was going to say, because the first time at 20 years old getting charged with that in prison, like... like the first proper time. When I say I've been to prison before, a couple of weeks here, a couple of weeks there, nothing about Just like not doing community service or okay, not cool. adhering to my tag and shit. Do you know what I mean? It's not like... Nothing serious. Yeah, nothing serious. But this is the first time I was in jail for something serious. Okay. Um, but... I, you see what it is? Nothing, things don't really phase me. Do you know what I mean? Like, new surroundings, I just take things, things are what they are. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, but then when obviously you had to go court for what happened. Yeah. So I was so when when that happened, like I was just thinking shit. Like I, that that shocked me a bit. Like yo, like I've took somebody's life now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, I felt bad in it. Um, then they come and got rearrested because they charged me with section eighteen. Now he's died. Come, the police have come back to the prison, told me back to the police station, rearrested me, and charged me with murder. I'm like, how's it murder? It's definitely a manslaughter. How's it murder? I've hit him once. I've not shot him. I've not stabbed him. I'm not even stamped on his head. Nothing. They come with a narrative. You're a boxer, etc. Your hands are weapons, etc. So got charged with murder. Did that get changed? Oh, so you actually got charged with murder. I got charged with murder. So now I'm in jail for murder. Um, you got moved. I'm guessing. No, all jails, you, you can be in there for shoplifting or murder, it doesn't make a difference. It's okay, all in the same wow. jail. Um, it depend, depending on how long you get sentenced, depends on what category you jail, but we're all in a remand jail anyway. So oh, you're in remand you, at this yeah. point? Oh, still, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so then I changed my lawyers because I didn't think the lawyers I was doing a good job. Changed my lawyers. I'm going to got a new QC, which is a barrister a very high level barrister they basically said look there's a lot there's a lot of things going on here I'm like what are you on about he said there's a lot of bad things going on I said what are you on about just say what you've got to say yeah, like, tell me be open yeah. I need to know. he's like basically when the guy went to hospital the hospital punctured his lung trying to uh, but before they punctured his lung they put him on a they, they sedated him and put him on a ventilating machine so he so could help him breathe he didn't need it but it's meant to be standard practice when somebody's unconscious or something so they've done that, but the machine they've put him on didn't work. So they've cut his own air supply off and put him on their machine but to breathe for him. It didn't work. So they've left him for like 45 minutes with a machine that doesn't work, hardly working. He's starved his brain of oxygen. His body's gone into cardiac arrest. So now they've ran back in trying to um, resuscitate him. They've punctured his lung, um, trying to, his lungs are collapsed. So then they've punctured his lung, trying to inflate or whatever they do, but they punctured his lung anyway, right next to his heart. So it's just one blunder after another. So I'm like, they said that was the cause of death, basically cardiac arrest. How did how did they get all this information? Yeah, that's what I mean. How because did it's the... all written down in the doctor's records? Oh, is yeah, it? Yeah, they have to be like the, okay. everything, everything's all into. I don't know, but I know that they have, they've, they've, they've said look, we blundered it basically. So, like, well, I'm just thinking in that sort of scenario, surely the, there's like a dirty doctor who wouldn't write any of that. Down. Yeah, that's what I mean. Someone would try to cover it up. Yeah, of basically, yeah. Yeah, no, because the yeah, the, well, they didn't. Because I don't know, I don't know what the procedure is there, but obviously they couldn't get out of it for whatever reason. Mm. So I was like, okay, cool. If I've not killed him, then how am I getting charged with murder then? So they're saying, okay, cool, but you, your actions was... Well, the reason he's in hospital. Yeah, so they're saying you, your, your contribution to it was more than negligent. So they're saying, if you never put him there, he wouldn't have died. So I'm saying, I then, cool. Say if I hit somebody's foot with a hammer and broke his foot and he went to doctors and they give him painkillers and they put the decimal point in the wrong place and give him 10 times the dosage, and he dies. And he Scott dies. Does that mean it's my fault for her breaking this bone and putting him in hospital? But they're saying it's up to the jury to decide whether or not your actions have a not su sufficient enough um, contribution to his death. So I was like, okay, cool. Went to trial. They, before trial, they said, you can take a plea today on section 18 or manslaughter. And I said, no. I take a, I said, I'll plead guilty to section 20, which is serious harm without intent. Because I said, there's yeah. no intent there. They said, no. I said, oh, I'll go to trial on murder then. They said, you sure? I said, yeah, I'll go to trial on murder. Wow. I went to trial on murder. Big trial though. Yeah. Said, so, so, so they gave you the option to drop it down to manslaughter. Yeah, they said you completed guilty to manslaughter on section 18 today. But so then why did you go? Because, because I, he didn't, he's saying it weren't manslaughter. He's saying yeah. I didn't, because manslaughter was with the intent. No, no, no. Well, manslaughter was no intent. Manslaughter was no, manslaughter no, was no intent. Manslaughter, manslaughter is saying that you killed him accidentally. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm saying I didn't but you're kill saying him. you didn't kill him. I hit him. And there was no intent. There was no intention. There was no intent to cause him. There was intent to hit him, obviously, because I hit him. But there's no intent to cause him serious harm. Yeah, you just had a fight. You thought, let me hit him. Boom, yeah, yeah. So fight's basically, over. how it works is, say if it's section twenty, it means si um, serious harm without intent. Section eighteen, serious harm with intent. So, so if you, you stab somebody, for... it's obviously going to be a section eighteen. You've been so you went for twenty. You wanted yeah. Section I said 20. twenty. They said no. You can plead guilty to section eighteen, which is you get more for section eighteen than manslaughter anyway. So you can go to section eighteen or manslaughter. I said no. So they said so I'm going to murder trial. So I did, I and they found me guilty of manslaughter anyway. That's what happened. So I ran a, I ran a murder trial. They said not guilty of How murder. How long was your trial? A uh, few weeks, three weeks, I don't know. And what was that like? Because obviously, you said you went to prison before, but being on a murder trial is Yeah, no, a, that, that, so... That's a serious... Like, that, that, can, that alone can ruin someone. Yeah, it was hard. The, the thing about court, what I found hard, it wasn't actually in a courtroom so much. It was more... I'm already in prison, so you have to get up early in the morning, you have to sit in a bus and there's loads of waiting and then you sweat box and you go into court, you're waiting outside court for an hour, then you get off and it's just a long, it's just very draining mentally. 
just the process of getting them back. The trial itself wasn't so mentally draining. They made a lot of blunders that even I was picking them up on. Um, but looking back on it now, I deserve to go to prison. Four. And, I'm, and I'm glad they found me guilty of manslaughter. Because I feel like for two reasons. One, I didn't have to hit him. So if I didn't hit him, he would still be here today. He didn't deserve to die. And obviously no one, exp no one wanted him. No one um, wanted anybody to die. But looking back on it now, if I never, if I was a more mature like I am now, I'd have walked away from the situation, do you know what I mean? Whereas I didn't then. And because I was so insecure then and there was people around and I didn't want you people to, to laugh at don't me. don't need to prove a point. I don't need to prove a point that somebody's got to grow up with the fact that they've not got their son no more, do you know what I mean? And that's a hard reality to live with. No, 100%. I see so, what you're saying now in, in a sense that if you get into beef and feel like that you instantly like think so many, there's been so many situations where little things even like just anything and you think and I, I, where I, I literally watched like a five minute clip of that exact story and I thought I, every time it happens it could be just one punch and you, you might not even it might be nothing but if he drops smashes his head anything like that it's and it can and and let, I know we've all got egos and that but it can happen to us too bro one shot anyway you can die and you're just thinking like people think, I suppose with the, with, I guess we downplay it even more now than ever before because everyone's like, oh, I just have a strainer, everyone's stabbing each other, you, you, you know what I mean? Which I think knife crime is one of the stupidest things ever, it's just little boys that can't fight. So but even fighting is dangerous, bro. People don't understand, this, ha this stuff happens a lot. And you're forgetting, you're taking someone's brother away from them, someone's son away from them, maybe people's fathers away from them, just because... Uh, and it's either. always over stupid stuff. Most of the time it's it happens over Some, stupid, stupid... Someone I know, yeah, uh, it was a... Someone in my year, her older brother, literally owns a shop at the top of um, Woodford Avenue. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a wine shop or something like that. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, I do know it. So you must know who I'm talking about. I feel like you do. I do. But basically, yeah, he got into beef literally out of a club. All he done was punch the geezer. Same sort of thing. He got done for manslaughter as well. I think he's still inside. I'm not even too sure at this point. Yeah. But How long ago was it? It was, mad. Uh, it was years ago. I want to say years ago. I think it was when I was in year 12 or something. So what's that? 2015 sign, yeah. like that. But yeah, that's a long time, and I won't still be in jail for that. No. Yeah, not for one punch. One punch, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I won't get because uh, from he, what that's I heard, seven years, I would be 14 years for yeah. one punch. No, from, no, from, from what I've heard though, he 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 died pretty much died on the spot because he hit his head on the pavement and that was it. Yeah, but that don't matter though. Like he's still one punch manslaughter. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's only you see if you see if he hit him once and then kicked him, that's then different. it's different. Or if, you're, if there's aggregate fighting factors, or if there's like, or say if he's just run up and hit him for no, everything has a big impact. But say if you're just two people arguing and have a fight, mm. you're not going to get 14 years for one punch. Yeah. Most people, I got one of the highest you can get. And most people, like a guy just went in just before me, the, he just hit someone on the street. The guy hadn't beaten no one up before, the guy hadn't done nothing, and he got three years. You get it? Do 18 you got, months. You got eight years. Yeah. Eight years before. Well, I got seven years, but I got extra days because I was like, had bare mobile phones and then. <laughs> Bit so what? I ended up mobile phones, mobile, mobile oh. phones and stuff. So they had time on and stuff. Um, and what was it like inside? Peaceful, bro. Peaceful. So I don't I only realised that when I come out. Like I didn't like, I, I didn't like it in there. But when I look back, it's some of the most peaceful days because you just think you're not in this rat race of society of life, and you don't have no responsibilities. You don't have to worry about making money. You don't have to pay your bills. You don't have to worry about nothing. You just literally go. You you in yourself. I was literally in my cell all day asleep. I wake up at night, I go out for an hour a day, go gym, have a shower, chat to the lads, go back in my cell, and then all night I'll be on the phone to birds on Facebook and stuff all night. You know no I mean? beef in prison or nothing like that? I had a couple of fights, minor stuff. But with me, if touch wood, I don't ever, but if I was to ever go to prison, my... Okay, of course, no one wants to go to prison. My main worst thing, if that even makes sense, the worst thing I'd worry about is how my mum would feel. Like, if I heard my mum cry on the phone, like, even me, I've spent a night in a cell. I phone my mum after she's, oh, are you going to prison? Are you going to prison? That's it. Like, bawling her eyes out. And for me, that would be the worst thing. I wouldn't mind, like, I'm sitting there acting like I'm big and tough going to prison. It's a big deal, especially if it's your first time. But didn't that ever play on your head? So with me... Like, with your family thinking... Yeah, so like, I even went, your little brother, yeah. sister, like, that must have... So with me... It was more, I felt embarrassed for my family, like I've embarrassed my family, like I'm on the front page of the local telegraph all the time now for killing somebody. And I imagine a shame that's born my family. They supported me, like was there for me the whole way through it, but there's two sides, obviously, naturally everyone thinks about the family of the victim, which they should yeah. do, and that, my heart goes out to them, my heart really does break for them. I think more than anything, that's probably what affects me most have, to this day. Have you ever no, heard anything? Yeah. yeah, I'll get to it. 
in a minute. Um, but people forget about the side, obviously, what I put my own family through. And I'm very close to my nana and granddad. My nana and granddad mean the world to me. They're like my everything. I absolutely adore them. And to see them come in, like my elderly grandparents coming in, and they just love me so much, and they're getting searched, and I'm having to plot them through, getting searched to come and see me in prison, hard. and they're coming to see me in old fucking prison clothes and stuff. And I just felt like I'd, just, I'd let them down, do you know what I mean? So that hurt. That's one thing about prison that hurt me. The prison itself didn't... Did, it's just a waste of life. It's not even hard. I, I don't get bored because I've been by myself my whole life. So being in a cell by myself for four years didn't really bother me. There's I didn't nothing different. I grew up with my dad. Well, like I said, when I was 10, I moved to my stepmom. My dad's had a room on my own. I didn't see them. It was out all the time at work or whatever, and I was just in the house by myself. I, I raised myself anyway. To this day, unless I've got my son, I'm by myself, really. So that wasn't too disfamiliar for me. It was a comfort zone, if anything. Um, in regards to your question, have I reached out to the family? I haven't. I, don't, I, I know that he highly, like, don't support anything I do. Yeah, of course. Naturally, they don't want me to get my boxing license, but they really rally against me, have rallied against me. Not for the past few years, I've not heard nothing, but for a while. And naturally, I've never felt like, all oh, right, well, I've done my time, this and that. No, bro, like, you've took this on the way they should want and to And how old was he, if you don't mind me asking? Was, there's a year difference. I think he... 20 or 21? So if I, was ni- if I was 20, he would have been 19. Oh, he was younger than you? Yeah, he was one year younger, yeah. Um, would you ever reach out to him? I would... I would do if I felt like they would, they would want me to, yeah. but I just feel like I don't want to insult them by reaching out to them. Like, how dare you reach out to me after what you've done? Do you know what I mean? Um, I'd like if if they didn't feel like that, I'd like to reach out to them and let them know. Look, like I don't like I've changed. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't change the past, but I can only change the person I've become. So after taking you, after being involved in your son losing his life, I can only try and stop other people making the same mistake. Do you know what I mean? And like that's why it warmed my heart earlier when you said, you know what, when I get angry and stuff, I think about the clip. One hundred percent, I do. One hundred percent. As much as it's hard to think it on the spot, we've all been there. Something's happened. You're sitting there, you think, oh shit. But then you think, like one second, like this isn't a joke. It's, yeah, it's one joke, one wrong punt, one wrong move, and that's it. Yeah, Someone's life's gone. Like it's not. A, it's such a imp- like it changes. Not just the person's gone. Like it changes his family's life, your life, your family's life. It has such a ripple effect on everyone around you. And it's just no good comes of it. And it's always over something so minor. It's not like this person's trying to rape your mum or something. Do you know what I mean? It's over like the most stupid of things. What you're looking at or you barged into me or you stepped on my shoes. Stupid stuff. And the difference is if, if he was to... Let me word it. How I can word it. If he was to just pass away naturally, the family would... Of it course, heart, uh, yeah. but it'd be easy it's, because it's, a, it's like... It's just, it was natural. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. It was. There's yeah. nothing they could have done about it kind of thing. Of course, they couldn't have done anything about your situation, but... The fact they've got you to blame makes it worse. Yeah, hundred percent. So that, especially at that young age, nineteen years old as well, it's not. Word ahead of it. He had a word at his feet, man. He, like he was a clever guy. He was in uni, he was smashing uni. Do you know what I mean? And like, look, because I was such an insecure little idiot, and I didn't have to walk away from my fight. Look what happened. Did anything happen to the other boys you was with? No, because they didn't do nothing wrong, did they? One of them just got beat up, and one of them was just there. So no, nothing happened to them. But I feel like, I know the guy that started it all was the guy that got beat up. Like, I feel, I don't know whether he did start but I think he was definitely an instigator. Like he just, no one's ever heard or seen him since. Like he just kind of just Trusted. disappeared, yeah. Like I don't, there's nothing he could have done anyway, but I'm just like, I hope, I don't know how he feels, if he maybe, feels guilty. Yeah, maybe, maybe he's dipped because he, I don't know, obviously I don't know him. Feels guilty to that. some extent. Feels guilty to some extent and he thinks, you know what, I need to like, I need to chill out. I don't want to know anyone from that sort of time. I want to kind of cut that, that night. part of my life cut out. that part of my life. I don't even want to think about it sort of thing. Yeah. Maybe he's on one of them as well. I don't know. But if it yeah, was me in that know. situation and I was that guy who instigated it and I've seen on the paper that this has happened, this is all mad, I'd be like, yo, raw, like, yeah. check life, move city, something like that. Yeah, Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I want to get away from that all entirely. Yeah, nice. No, so put it behind. But yeah, so the whole thing was just a sad situation. But it made me grow as a person, man. I think from that day, I just seen how light, how serious life can be, how what the meaning of life and stuff. And obviously, like I said, like I was saying to you earlier off camera, being in prison is the closest thing to being dead. You're just yeah, in a concrete this. tomb, which is a cell, 23 hours a day. So you're not even living; you're just existing. Literally. And then you start to question, okay, what's life about? What's my purpose in life? And that's when I started trying to. I just had some long, deep conversations and thoughts with myself, and I was thinking about life and the meaning of life, and that's when I started looking into religion, read the Bible, didn't really make sense to me. Like, it made a lot of sense to me, but certain things didn't add up for me, a lot of contradictions and errors that I found in there. So no one, oh, go on, oh, yeah. you ask you, <laughs> So then, 
Um, I looked into a few other religions, not proper deep, but I looked into a few things and nothing really sat with me. So what, what religion was you? Nothing. So you didn't follow not, nothing? No. Nah. Family wasn't? No, nah, they're Christian by name, but none of them practice. Okay, cool. Um, and then like I was saying to you earlier, when you go into pr- different prisons or you can get moved different wings and you're in that different many cells and there was a book that I gave you earlier. Yeah, yeah. that book it's, up there. It's not the exact book, but it, it's... the screen on here, yeah? Yeah, grab it. It's got a brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam. So you said Islam, I picked up a right hand on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was just basically left in one of the cells that I moved to. And I'd never even... Con- Sweat, oh, no way. Yeah, so yeah. I was never really contemplating looking into Islam, really, because I just thought they just brainwashed this and that. Like, that is Muslim. literally Allah putting this in front of you. Yeah, bro. So like I, like, I, like, I, like I was telling you earlier, I've got an older sister that's Muslim. And she's the only other person in my family that's Muslim. And uh, I was, she, was she Muslim the whole time? No, she turned Muslim probably a few years before I went to jail. Okay. Um, so I used to rip her like, oh, look at your little letterbox, rah, 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 rah. you just brainwashed. But I didn't really mind. I was just having kind of banter with her. It just but Islam changed her for the best. Like she, any bad habits she had or bad things she used to do, she just stopped doing. She don't go out no more. She don't drink. She's not texting boys, which she was probably doing. It ain't 19, 20 years old, you know what I mean? Which girls in the West normally obviously do. Or just any girls anyway do that probably with not pure intention of getting married and this and that whatever so she changed her for the best um but i was just never really interested in it and I, when i was asking certain of my friends questions that was muslim they couldn't give me pop they could give me answers but the answers didn't sit right with me it never related to you yeah like they just didn't know how they just didn't understand how to give me the correct hour for a revert because they were probably not used to one uh, for a non-muslim sorry because i wasn't used to one but i read that book now that book there changed my life bro that so book i was you read that in what a day I read it straight it's away. A, it's only a small book. I read it straight away. I'm going to read it when I get home tonight because... I'm going to order this, bro, because it, obviously... I've got, I've got copies. I'll send you one, bro. Send me your dress. I, I bought 10 the other day. Is it? Yeah, send me one. I'll send you one. <laughs> How come you bought Bez? Because when I see it, yeah. you I knew it. the power of the book what it did to me and I want to give this to my friends and family, bro. So I bought loads of them. So send me your dress. I'll send it you. Well, I'm, ha- I'm happy to grab it. I'm Muslim anyway. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't need to reveal you anything. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I give him one anyway. He obviously is yeah, Muslim yeah. anyway. Alhamdulillah. But like, Alhamdulillah. But that's mad though. Like, I thought that's what I was going to ask you. So it wasn't really like no a, one like, in, in, in no one said no. So you no. so you read the book and what happened? Bro, Co- that book is a gold mine, bro. So that you, book. Wait, you read it in what a day? I read it in a couple of hours. I and thought it was going to be a story similar to you know Rimsy. Yeah, I was going to because he went he went pen obviously and yeah. he met a few guys and they were taking him to drama and stuff yeah. like that. So I thought it was going to be that, but nah, bro. The fact so that this book was left in a cell, bro, that's just so special. imagine this year. So I was in jail for four years. It was probably the last eight months of my sentence. Wow. So I did all my most of my jail non-Muslim anyway. Mm. So everyone's like, oh yeah, you did it for better food, you did it for protection. First of all, it was in Cat C prisons, it wasn't in Cat A prisons. Like Cat A prisons, yeah, they're run by Muslims. Yeah. These prisons here, the Muslims were fighting each other, some of them. Do you know the Cat A's were run by Muslims. The Cat A prisons, yeah, the most high prisons, yeah, the Muslims run them jails, yeah. 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 I, I watched Muslims them. I watched them. Like, that's why most people to go there and take the shot because if you're a Muslim, no one can't touch you, bro. Is it? Yeah, them Cat A prisons, right. them lifers, they ain't getting out, they're getting 40, 50 years old life and never getting out. But like we're in, we're in a jail where you get 10 years or under. So yeah. everyone's getting out. Um, so anyway, I read that book and it's just like that. Like I said, I'm a man of facts. I don't care how things make you feel. Everyone has feelings for different things. I don't care how it makes you feel. I don't care what it's meant to do or this and that. I want facts. And that, that talks about scientific facts. Where it, that basically the Quran is impossible. It's literally impossible to be written by a man or made up by humans. It has to have come from God. The thing that it not, the things that it speaks about in detail. It's not vague. It's very precise. It has details. It tells you where it comes from, the purpose of everything, and the the reason for everything. And everything this was written fourteen hundred years ago. Science only in the past couple of hundred years is only just been proving it right with new microscopes technologies this and that even and even there's lots more that's not been proven by science yet because science isn't at a level yet to not prove as it, advanced to even, prove even it the most recent it, thing you see the, the picture that nasa took of, of space the moon. Like that. Yeah. The moon. no not the moon no, no, the it was like some next galaxy or something like that like different did you hear about the moon no, no. you didn't hear about the moon what about the crack in the moon oh yeah 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 that that yeah. when i first heard that because obviously i've been speaking to a lot more people about it within the, like the last month and stuff and like there's so many facts you can't knock it like a lot of people like let's put all of the like you said feelings aside and what are your beliefs and that beliefs if you literally just sat down with factual information only it, it's you can't yeah. you can't beat it you know what it is if you let me tell you this is one thing i strongly believe you the only reason 90 percent of people reject islam is because islam rejects their lifestyle if they come sincerely and not, I don't care what they think is right and wrong, and, and and search for what's true, they will come to Islam. 
it's undefeatable. There's no contradictions. There's no errors. Everything like even the things where it sounds if you if you if you don't understand the wisdom behind it, ruling certain rulings in Islam, you think oh, it's sexist, or you will think it's misogynistic, or you think it's barbaric. But when you look deeper than that, okay, I understand if it's, it might look like that. I agree, some things. But when you look in the wisdom and the reasoning behind it and how things are meant to work, it's so beautiful and precise and it has a beautiful meaning behind everything. Everything works. Remember, us as humans think we know what's best for ourselves. I know what's best for myself. I'm going to do this. Me, myself, I still have this problem with myself. Sometimes I'll do something that's probably might not be Islamic because I, I, I want to make myself feel better at that, at that specific time. But if you want to know what's best for yourself, who made us? Allah made us. Who knows what's best for us? Allah. Why do you think depression and anxiety and things is at an all-time high at the minute? Because everybody's so far away from God and our natural state. Everyone thinks they know what to do, what's best for themselves, but they don't because everyone's depressed. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got anxiety. When if you just stick to what God told you, if you do this, this, you and just this, follow it. The simple you, steps. Allah says, if you if you forget Allah, you're gonna live a terror, a wretched life, a depressing life. Do you know what I mean? You remember Allah. That's what you need, bro. It's our natural disposition to turn to Allah. So you can call him God. If I, some people don't like the name Allah, I can call him God. It means the same thing. Do you know what I mean? If you're a Christian, people don't understand this. A lot of people don't understand this. If you're a Christian and you speak Arabic, you call God Allah. You're a Christian. You say, oh, it's Allah. It's just an Arabic word for God. Um, but yeah, Islam. So I thought I'm gonna take. I, I thought I'm not too proud. One thing about me is I can, even to even to this. This is how real I try and be with myself. If someone can come up to me now, or at any time, and give me one error or contradiction in the Quran, I will leave Islam today. For the simple fact is, if that's a pure word of God, He can't make mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. So, as well. Yeah, God can't make mistakes. If it's a pure word of God, there will be not one. Con contradiction and not one error so i don't mind changing my opinion if i get if you can be proven wrong if i get more information i don't mind changing my opinion i'm not do you know what i mean i'm not I, I'm, I don't think i'm too good to do that so that's how i was when i used to be against religion and this and that now i've read the quran i've read the books and i changed my opinion it's the best decision i ever made in my life islam is the most important thing in my life i'm not the best muslim i sin i sin i sin but i pray i pray i pray so Mashallah. you have to pray bro no matter what people think are oh, and then this happens to me, this is a shaitan, bro. You lot, bro, you're sinning when you can't pray. Sometimes I'll go to pray and I'll feel like such a hypocrite. How are you going to pray now after you know what you've done or you know what you might do in the future? You're just a hypocrite, but I know that's a shaitan, bro. God yeah. loves nothing more. I was, telling, I was saying this to you earlier, you'll know yeah. this. Allah says, if, this was, if the world was full by people that didn't, didn't sin, sin and didn't pray, he would wipe it off and... Say if no one in the world sin, Allah will replace us with the people that sin and repent to him because he can even turn your bad deeds into good deeds if you make toba. Do you know what I mean? So you that bad deed that you've done could actually get you into heaven. Imagine that. You've done a sin because you've made toba, you've you'll turn it into a good deed and that could make you take that could be a ticket to Jannah, bro. You know about the story about that prostitute that fed a cat? No. There was like back in the day or something like that, it was a prost obviously she's a prostitute, yeah, so that's a sin in itself. Mm. All she done was feed a cat some food because the cat was crying, like a stray cat. Yeah. She went to heaven. You see, with me, I take a different approach on it. Everyone has their different journey to Allah, innit? Everyone yeah. has their different journey to whatever religion they go to. See me, like, them things like that, if I want, if I was playing for things and it's happening, I wouldn't necessarily think it was from God. Because I'm not like that. See me, no, before I, I believe that, for me personally, before I leave that, now if something happens, I'll know it's from Allah. But before I get to that stage, I want to know, okay, cool, how do I know it's from Allah? Because I know... All the things that are miracles in life, so you, before you can believe in miracles, because miracles is something they can't explain, like yeah. there's no explanation for how it happened. So it sounds like a fairy tale. So people are like, how can you believe in all these things when you say you're so logical? Logic, log, that defies logic. I said, cool. But we first have to work out why I believe in the Quran. And the reason I believe in the Quran is because it's, it's impossible to come from anyone else. So now, now I know that book is not from human I've, and, I, and I believe it's from God. Anything that book says, I now believe, whether it's illogical or not it's out of this world it's, it's beyond our comprehension do you know what I mean so the only reason I believe in certain things now is because I know that Allah is true and it's real but before that these feelings and this and that I didn't. I wasn't superstitious I didn't believe in feelings or nothing like that the only reason I believe in it now is because I believe in the Quran so you see what it is as well yeah this is the power of Islam yeah I've got friends you'll know yourself you can speak to a Muslim yeah he doesn't practice doesn't pray man I've even prayed for years you speak to him about Islam, you'll, sp you'll see passion. That's what, we said. That's what we said earlier. I'll come with passion. And you put, brother, they say, and I don't know if this is the reason, well, this will be a huge reason why. You see, when you speak about Allah, Allah sends down angels mm. to, guard it, to guard the conversation, right? Um, so when you're in a gathering, you're speaking about Allah, Allah sends angels down. 
And that's why if you notice, anytime you speak about Allah, you feel good, no? When when you do things for the sake of Allah, you're softening your heart. Like my journey to Islam was hard. Like not not to, when I first turned Muslim, it was hard. So I turned Muslim, come out of jail. I was on it. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't rave, I wouldn't do nothing, I wouldn't go out, I wouldn't just I was just on it. Did you get it? I wouldn't even like I was just very like and then there was strict. A, yeah, sh- like not sh- like not like uh, You're extremist, your best. but like I was I was good man, I was, I felt clean and good, yeah, you know. Yeah, what yeah. Mean? And then, but where I'm from, there's no Muslims, like, there is, there is but I don't know none of them. And... What are you talking about, bruv? Derby's Muslim galore. Yeah, if you go to Normanton, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But uh, so, so with me, I, I knew a couple of Muslims, but they was like from Pakistani families, so we have different cultures and stuff like that. And they would, their, how they saw Islam was different to kind of how I saw it. So like, I was kind of on my own, and like, my, any of my friends that I go with, and I roll with, none of them are Muslim, none of my family are Muslim. My sister is, but she lives in Brentford. Um, so I was just a lone soldier and slowly, slowly the dunya started to get hold of me again. So after a few months and that, I started to go out, started drinking, started just doing... Did your luck change? Not um, your luck, but did your... I just wasn't happy. I wasn't your happy. Your mental... Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I was going to yeah, say, yeah, did yeah, you yeah. become a bit yeah. depressed and down? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't happy, as happy as I was. Happy when? when like he... when I fell off my dean. Okay. So then there was times, so like, it happened for a few, for a good few years where like I'd be on it and I wouldn't, and I'd try again and I'd try and fast and I'd keep some most of them but not all of them and things like that then it, everything changed when I met do you know Khalid Sadiq yep. yeah so basically me and him connected on Instagram he, he's the one who does the nasheeds and everything yeah, right yeah yeah, okay, yeah yeah me and him connected on Instagram so he's Muslim he's born Muslim people think he's a river but he's actually born Muslim yeah he's Jamaican English like me yep um, and we just saw the same Islam like I didn't feel like, I kind of felt like I fitted in when I spoke to him, I could speak to him and he kind of understood me and he had the exact meaning, but like basically had agreed on so much. And then through him, I met a lot of other brothers. I met his brother, I met Briggs, I met um, Gambi, and I met quite a few people through him, my bro Moya, Farhad. Um, and they was all saw the same Islam as me. They was very laid back and it was a very natural thing. Like with people I spoke to before about Islam and the other Muslims I've met and stuff, they was very like, I kind of felt like it was very strict and if you don't do this, it's wrong and you're going to hell where these lot understood you're a human being. We all have our own weaknesses. None of them are perfect. They don't try to be perfect. And whatever we do that helps us bring us closer to Allah, we're going to do that. And if so, some people have to be very strict to get close to Allah. And if that works for you, do that. Some people need to take a more of a um, laid back approach because they'll put them off if it's too strict. So, mm-hmm. And then I started to enjoy Islam. And that's when I, that's when Islam really, that's when I really fell in love with the religion. Before I just, I did it because I believed it and I'd fall off and stuff. I just, I just believed it to be true because it made too much sense not to be. But it's then from that, a couple of years, that, this was only about two years ago, two, two and a half years ago. That's when I started to fall in love with Islam. I'd speak to them, would do lectures of night, uh, of a night, would link up. And that's when I started to really fall in love with it. And I, that, when I fell in love with it and I was on my dean and I was praying and, that's from then it's like I get a feeling where it's just I get soft hearted and like even emotional to a point like me I'm not an emotional person um, even when I all that through, through jail all them years listen, I didn't cry once like I wasn't I'm not really an emotional person like that but like Allah, Allah and Islam really soften my heart and like now I'm not I'm far from perfect but I try don't try and miss no prayers and if I miss one make it up and I think once you stay on top of your prayers, that's the most important thing. You're going to sin, you're going to sin. You're going to repent. You're still going to sin because Allah made us like that. We're weak. It's impossible for us not to sin because Allah said he made us weak. You're going to sin. So if Allah's telling us we're going to sin, who are we to say, oh, I'm sinless? Do you know what I mean? The problem is not sinning. It's trying our best not to sin and seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And just trying to build, man. Like, look, one thing I try to do as well, like, I feel like it happens maybe more in media than it does in real life. But a lot of Muslims, they all... Revert, sorry. A lot of reverts, they will take shahada and forget who they are. Like they try and change, like you're not Arab, bro. You're not Asian, you're not this. Yeah, I'm true. just the exact same as I am. I'm Jamaican, I'm English, and I'm Muslim. I don't need to be anyone else but myself. I wear a thobe sometimes cause, just because I like how they look. Mm. But I don't just wear them all the time and I don't wear a If you want to wear a thobe and a kufi, cool, that do your thing. But for me personally, I always wanted to keep my identity. And I feel like it's helping bring a lot more people from my generation or around me or my, uh, in my culture to think, oh yeah, like, oh, Muslims ain't just all them guys that are super strict and wear kufi and they're just in the mosque 24-7, like, that's good, Do you can do all them things, it's good to be um, more more Islamic knowledge, I have the better. But I wanted to let, let, yo, but just like you, like, a lot of my friends that are Muslim won't even know, they act like us, they just do like us, but yo, we make sure we pray five times a day. And I feel like I just want to kind of build the bridge or the void between like, because 
from when I grew up and stuff, like Muslims was completely different to us. Yeah. And I'll say, yo, we're just like you, bro. We just believe in Allah and we live a clean life. And really, if you take Shahada and you, and you follow the Islamic rules, you're only going to become a better person. Okay. So, so if you're following it, how Muslims should follow it, what are you going to do? I'm a Muslim. Okay, so I'm going to be kind to people. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to go out and get drunk. I'm not going to go and start sleeping about and having unsolicited sex and having kids with all people out of wedlock. What's, what, what, bad can come, what bad can come out of being a Muslim? Now, the only, the only bad thing that can come out of being a Muslim is getting the wrong data from the wrong people and, be, and, and getting the wrong understanding of Islam and becoming a terrorist. Mm. But that happens in any religion. Christians, you get Christian terrorists that go and kill people in the name of Christianity. It happens with all religions. So it's no different to any religion. But we all know that, it, that all religions are peaceful religions if you follow them correctly. So really, what's the bad thing about becoming a Muslim? You're just going to be a better person and you're going to have a happier life. I was watching a lecture one time, yeah. It was, um, it was like a big debate or something like that. And it was a Christian in the crowd and a Muslim lecturer. Who was it? Uh, Zaki and I. Dr. Zaki and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, yeah, him so, and uh, Amadida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might have already seen it then. Yeah, probably not what I'm talking <laughs> about. Yeah, Whereas a Christian woman in the crowd, she's saying, um, I'm a Christian, but my friends say I'm Muslim or something like that. And he was basically saying that if you are Christian and you're you following the actual way that Jesus uh, portrayed so if you, you follow Christians. Them, if you follow, if you say you're a Christian and you follow Jesus, then you should be a Muslim. Yeah, then you are Muslim, yeah, <laughs> yeah. which is mad. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. if, right. if you believe in Jesus and you follow what he says, then you believe that um, Prophet um, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last and final message. And it's true, bro. He says, if you, I'm more Christian than a Christian, and so that's what he says. He goes, if you, people say that they're Christian, he says, me as a Muslim, I'm more Christian than a Christian than so. I don't eat pork, and it says in the Bible you shouldn't eat pork. So I don't drink alcohol, and the Bible says you shouldn't drink alcohol. The women cover their hair in the Bible. It says the women should cover their hair. So if you're following it more, Christians follow Christianity more than most Christians do today. Um, but I just feel like with society today, especially in the West, God's not really, it's not cool to believe in God. A lot of, yeah, for a lot of people. That's what a lot no, of but there's, there's a whole conspiracy around this one, though. I yeah. can, I About can around deep what? into this shit. Around what? About why like a whole Westernized culture and all that's like, they're trying to get it out there and all take away everyone's connection from God. Yeah, but to go, to go deep in that right now. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're <laughs> early in the stages, isn't it? Yeah, it's I a little chat to tie about it. Uh, uh, I don't want to scare you I, in that. I, I want to know one thing from you, though, Ty. When you found Islam during your last eight months of your sentence, or did anything change? Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, as in, obviously, of course, you prayed you, and all that, but was you excited to come out and be a Muslim, if that makes sense? Um. I was just excited to get out. I didn't really. <laughs> it was eight months. I remember, like, <laughs> well, I remember, I remember yeah. But thinking. most guys, when they come out, for example, first thing they're gonna do is go out, get drunk with the boys. Yeah, yeah, no. So I mean, yeah. as in, when you was coming out, what was you excited to do? Be see my family. That's what it was. Yeah. That's most what I get. like obviously, when a lot of people come out, it's oh yeah, let's go out with the boys, let's yeah, do this because yeah, you're yeah. still I young. Wanted, yeah, I was, still was young. young. I just wanted to be with my family, but I want to see my grandparents so bad. And how did your family take it? So it's mad, yeah. My dad didn't care. My dad's very nonchalant. Like, He's like, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. My mom was fuming. Really? Yeah, because she was like, don't bring that ear around my girls. Look, she's got, this is my stepmom. She's got two daughters. And I feel like... Don't bring she, what around your girls? Don't come here with your Islamic stuff around my girls. Oh, trying to bring okay. them, this and that. This is what she said the first when I first told her on the phone. And then the next day she apologised. So I was trying to act like that. But I feel like she still had a misunderstanding of what Islam was. And she probably thought, oh, I'm going to tell them, right, you have to wear a burqa, don't leave the ass. Because you, you, you do see on programmes, yeah, yeah, they yeah. telling them, yo, mom, you can't speak to me. Like, and there were some men are disowning their mom. Bro, if your, no mom's, your mom's your mom, regardless to no if way. your mom's Muslim or not, you have to give her respect. Yeah. But these lot have got some, some, some yeah, it's very, 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 very rare. But you get this one idiot that doesn't understand Islam and then, yeah, so that's probably the, and that's the only stuff that the media portrays. So my mom's probably watched something on TV and forever like that. What's that? What's mad now is my mom loves the fact I'm Muslim. Really? She encourages me to stay on it. She says, I'm so happy you're Muslim. And she even says, take your dad to the mosque with you. That's what my mom says. Well, I used to take your is dad it? to the mosque. Have you? Yeah, so my, so my dad, he's got a, I, I say a big ego, but my dad this year more than ever is more not becoming stubborn to that idea so like I took, I took him out with me the other day put a thobe on went to a wedding and he likes him and he knows but i just feel like now and even his best friend that he was with asking me about he said yo i've been listening to it and islam's taking to me still and i feel like and that's your dad's best mate and that's my dad's best mate so i feel like it, because it's coming so familiar to my dad he might not feel so like oh I, what will everyone think of me if i do it so inshallah yo everyone that's listening to this that's muslim yo i'll make the wall for him and may allah guide him inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. Um, mm. But yeah, my dad loves them. My dad's always, from the start, loved that I was Muslim. Like, when I was on my dean, I was just the best version of myself. 
And then when I fell off, it was like, you need to get back on your dune. Do you know what I mean? So, so your dad's not Muslim yet? No, not yet. Do you want to uh, guide him down that path? 100%. But what I've realised in myself is... Do you feel like it's a calling for you? Because we were speaking about, we this as well. about it as well. Yeah, so what I've realised is when I was living a certain life, I'm by, my, by far no means perfect now. But when I was living a certain life and I was just fully not even praying, not doing nothing, I thought, what representation am I giving Islam? They think I'm some fake Muslim. So how can I guide them and I'm not even look like I'm guiding myself? And I realized the best form of dawah, the best form of dawah I can give is to be a good Muslim myself, and it will naturally have a good impact on them. And they mm-hmm. see it and they and they'll, incl- and they'll open their hearts. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like that is sure. that in itself will help. So I feel like I need to just get more strict and more strict, not more strict, but like more on it and more disciplined with my salah and more disciplined. I, I do keep them, but I should be more on time and just 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 keep just just be more just more involved in it do you know what I mean and I feel like that will guide them man I think I like to answer your question do I feel like I have a f- do I feel like it's my calling and I feel like I do man I feel like a lot of people speak to me about Islam a lot my Insta is mostly Muslim followers they show me love I get a lot of hate from Muslims don't get it twisted really? but yeah oh, one thing you know is you're going to get hate with your Muslims as d- down smoke bro, serious. Why? what did they say to you oh bro about I, what Cause uh, did you see my you, uh, you must not see my story like well, the other day one of them was like do you think us Muslims accept you Serious? Swear, Listen, oh, okay, all, all the time. But See, he doesn't like, bother me. Well, like, he doesn't bother like me. So tapped, you know that. Yeah, yeah, they don't understand. I'm like, yo, if you're you're saying you're Muslim, one, he, he put two things. He was like, you uh, you think those Muslims accept you? You're just a fake Muslim. Then the other one was, and then he was like, oh, you're just like them Somalis, misogynistic jahi or something like that. And I was just like, um, I must have put a picture like this. I like, I don't give a <laughs> shit. I, I don't give a, I don't care what they say. Cause, like, you know your, you know where you stand. Yeah, I'm so not like people can say things to me. Things don't honestly like they don't bother me. So like, you say something to me, but what they don't understand is okay, cool. I'm strong minded. I don't care what you think. Like you probably, I know for a fact that only, if you was happy within yourself, you're not gonna go on Instagram and message somebody yeah. something nasty. Do you know what I mean? If you're happy in your life, you're not gonna go and be nasty to other people. Is when any some any time anyone ever messages me something negative, I just feel sorry for them. I think what are you going through through in your life? You're obviously not happy within yourself. Yeah, 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 May Allah guide you, man. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But there's other people out there that are not as strong-minded as me, and they don't—they can't see through the bullshit, and it'll push them away from Islam. You have to be careful, you say, because some people they might be getting attention, or they might think like, if I if I get because a lot of I get a lot of DMs off like Muslim girls and that, and like they wanna speak to me, or meet me, or whatever, well, date me, or whatever, like, yeah. and try and, and try and marry me, or whatever. <laughs> have you ever had the opposite when you've been speaking to a? non-Muslim girl where she's turned around and not been interested because you are Muslim never never ever had that problem what would you do if someone not just necessarily a girl I don't speak to non-Muslims <laughs> <laughs> nah I do but I've never had that problem if, if, it's, if it's not a girl or okay, you know, let's say it is a girl yeah you met a girl she's not Muslim you're interested in her though you're allowed to be but she's she finds out you're Muslim and says you know what I don't want to know you anymore yeah, yeah. I'm what, not interested what, what would you say i say okay why what about Islam what is it about Islam that puts you off. And what and if she's not it. even wanting yeah, to what if she don't even want to have that she conversation? She said, oh, you're basically saying, oh, it's either me or Islam. Yeah. I say, jet it, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't pick, I wouldn't, even my family, I would never, if anyone said to me, even anybody, you said, it's me or Islam, I'd say, well, this is the end of the road, isn't it? Yeah, safe. No one's coming before Islam. Like, mm. Everyone's like, how can okay, Islam you say be more that. important to you than your son? And my son means the world to me. My son is my everything. But with Islam, there would be no my son. Do you know what I mean? Islam, my son is the, nothing means more to me than my son except Islam. Islam is the pinnacle of everything because without Islam, well, bro, we're all going to be dead soon. This is what people forget, yeah? We live in this rat race of life. We're all going to be dead soon, real soon. Like, what's 20, 30, 40 years? I, it only seemed like the other day was 10 years ago. And yeah. I went like, to jail like the other day, it was 10, over 10 years ago. Life goes quick. The accurate, the afterlife is for eternity, bro. So don't get caught up in this life, bro. Islam, for me, what's going to happen to me when I die? That's what really matters, do you know what I mean? It's like, a, it's like, imagine being so invested in something of a weekend. Oh, I need to get this and do this just for the one week. The weekend's been and gone now. Mm, you don't yeah, even remember true, the weekend. True. It was 15 when, when years ago. Like that one weekend different. was 15 years ago. Yeah, no, but you've got the rest of your life to live. But imagine when you die, it's eternity, bro. This life is going to be nothing. You don't even remember living in this life. It's not mm. that deep. Just try and live the best you can to Allah. Even things that, even if you find certain things boring, you can't do this and do that. Just try and strive and struggle for the way up for Allah, man. And Allah will forgive you, man. He's most merciful, man. And it's a good job he's the most merciful because we ain't nothing but sinners, bro. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like I might, if Allah wasn't so merciful, we'd all be fucked. 
I, I shouldn't say Allah I'm swearing in the same sentence but it's true if we, Allah wasn't so merciful the amount of stuff we get up to it, as humans and the sins that we've committed or the amount of times we've not got to pray and just everything bro it, it, Allah has to be the, it, it's a good job he's the most merciful because we'd all have no chance mm -hmm. and people think oh what well, so you can just do what you want and repent and that's it well that's, I can just do whatever I want and just keep repenting and it's you sincere repentance that, you don't understand the sincere repentance how is it sincere if you keep doing it because it's just, if, it's a, if you keep doing it, it's, it's a um, weakness of mine. It doesn't mean I'm not sincere. I don't want to do it. It's an addiction, almost. Do you know what I mean? Certain things that I have, it's a bad habit, almost. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I enjoy doing certain things. Well, if as you, long as you're making your way back to the prayer mat. Yeah, bro, that's the most important thing. Make sure you make work back to that prayer mat and eventually Allah will take that, make it easy for you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It might be a test. Why is it not? It's like if I don't want to do a sin, if I go and pray once, is Allah going to make it easy for me to stop? No, you have to have sabr, bro. You have to have patience. It's actually a test from Allah. That test that you're getting at that you're finding it hard to stay away from could be your key to paradise. So you just have to just... It's, it's, it's all a test. That's, that's the way I kind of look at it now as well. Everything, every problem in your life is there for a reason. No problem is just there for the sake of it. Yeah, of course. No, 100%. Like I have a friend called Briggs. He's an Ustad. And I just love being around him. You know, there's them people that you're around and when you're around him, you're just happy. You've just got such a good vibe, so pure. And he's like... He's not wealthy by any means, and he just like, but he goes, at, this man goes all over the world, and he's just like, yeah, Allah will provide for me. Like, he just has so much belief in Allah. He, he just finds, it just happens. He just happens. Allah just puts blessings in his life, and if something bad happens, he's like, alhamdulillah. If something good happens, alhamdulillah. He doesn't like, he doesn't get too gassed because he knows what Allah gives he can take, mm -hmm. and he doesn't get too disheartened. And he, the way his mindset is, he's so, his tackle's so high and so strong, like, he just, most things, he just backs off with an island. It's like, he's just like, it's a test. So if something bad happens, he almost, he almost, seems, he almost likes it. If something's bad <laughs> happened. How are you gonna act, react now? And he knows it's a test from Allah. So that's another blessing for him. He's gonna pass the test, and it's another blessing. Yeah, that's mad. The it, way he lives his life is, is beautiful. That's just man. pure belief, though, isn't it? Yeah, that is pure that's belief. That's what we all strive to be like, man. Pure belief. Past him, like to some of the, to, to just mad belief to the point where you can almost feel like you can see him. See Allah. Obviously, you can't see Allah, but if you looked at him, would die. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't even look at the sun without a squint and imagine we see Allah, do you know what I mean? We're not in that physical form yet, but just almost like you can know his presence, you know what I mean? That's the kind of tackle we need, man, in life. Anything happens, man, yeah, alhamdulillah. It's not that deep, do you know what I mean? You see some people, this is what's mad, yeah? We live in a very um, blessed life. Look, we don't, we've got food, water, shower, cars, this, that, the other. Alhamdulillah. And we seem to be the most depressed nation on earth. But you see these kids that have got nothing, they're happy, bro. Yeah. These kids are happy. Some some of these kids are living in war stricken countries, and when bombs are not ki like killing their families, they're happy. They're happy that's, that's bro, what they're they're just, and they're just saying Allah Akbar. Do you know what I mean? They just even their families are getting blown up, and they still believe in Allah. Do you know what I mean? That's they've got way more tackle than us. We're very what's the word? Um, ungrateful. Hundred percent. We're so ungrateful as as a nation. As people nation. It was so ungrateful. So so ungrateful. We don't realize what we've got, and we never will. We won't. No, we're never going to turn around and say, oh, thank God, Th thank you, thank you for this. Never, we won't. We'll sit there, we'll say it, but we'll sit in the next day. Yeah, 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 100%. That's, that's I've, got, I've got a question for you, Ty. Your tats, did you get that before Islam? Some of them. Huh? Some of them. Some of them? Yeah. Okay, fair yeah. You know, there's, a, there's a big difference of opinion. I'm not, I'm not here to say the, haram, the, the large majority of opinion is definitely that her, tattoos are haram. But then there's a there's also opinion that the nuts. I need. I want to look into it more to find out yeah, what, how I see. Thought, it. Isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. I, I do. Uh, from what I've heard and you know research and stuff like that, I ain't got any tats myself. But you know, if you had tats before you revert, essentially when you do revert, those tats are, yeah, yeah, yeah. are pretty much invisible to Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, I, I don't know about yeah, the yeah. other bit. I did look into it because I, I, I did see a hadith that says oh, it, um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, cursed the woman with a tat, but as a woman. <laughs> because you, you say that yeah, you laugh yeah, but women can wear gold and silk but men can't yeah do you know what I mean so there's different warnings for men and it was because she was a well the woman that had the tattoo is because to mark that she was a prostitute and obviously we don't, some, some scholars say it's because she was marked it, it was the fact she was a prostitute marking herself as a prostitute that was that he cursed her for but I need to look into it I need to look into it properly that's why I said at the moment the large majority is that it's around um, I've had opinions that it's not but that's the thing this is one thing that's a blessing but it's a, it, I find it frustrating even though it is a blessing. When it comes to fiqh, there's that many different opinions amongst the schools of thought. Even even within the schools of thought, there's um, difference of opinion, even with, lo with so many different things. But you can, 
this is the perfect example. I feel like you have to find out what works for you. There'll be two rulings for the same situation. For example, it's one of the prophet, if you can kiss your wife while fasting. And he said, yeah, you can kiss your wife while fasting. And then someone else asked him, can you kiss your wife while fasting at a different time? Someone else asked him, oh, can, you kiss, can I kiss my wife while I'm fasting? And he said, no. So like we said, he could kiss his wife while fasting. And he said, yeah, because I know you can't control your desires. So once you kiss her, you'll go beyond that and have sexual intercourse, but you fast. There's another hadith talking about the companions of the Prophet and they was going on a journey somewhere. And he said, when you get, uh, go to such and such and don't stop until you get there. Um, as it was on the way, the time for a salah came in. Some of them stopped and prayed the salah and carried on going. And then some of them said, no, the Prophet said, don't stop until we get there. So they got there and prayed. They went back to the Prophet and said, oh, this is what we did, this is what they did, which was the right one. He said, you're both right. So there's more than one way. There's Everyone's more than one way to skin a cat. So there's more than one way to the same destination. So when it comes to fiqh, I feel like there's certain things where it's categorically everybody knows adultery, zina, alcohol, drugs, everything like this. It's all around. That's blanket. But when it comes to lesser things on certain things, then it, I feel like there's, there's there is difference of opinion for certain reasons. And I also feel like if there's difference of opinion. I'm like a, a, like a, a, a noticeable difference of opinion among scholars on certain subjects. I, I just personally take it as not haram for the simple fact is, if this is haram and I can burn in hell for this, then there's no way God's going to leave it ambiguous. He's going to let you know this is haram. And if it's not clear whether it's haram or not, and you're still going to burn me in hell for it, that wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't find that just from alone. So that's why I think if there's a difference of opinion on things, me personally, I don't normally take them as haram. But that's just me. You do whatever you do, whichever you find works best for you do you know what I mean Mikey do you know what Zamzam water is no the no. blessed water bro what's Zamzam it's water oh, I just want you to speak this level. bro yeah Zamzam Z-A-M 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 Zamzam yeah and what is it but it's the sweetest water you'll ever taste in your life it's called normal water it's water water bro yeah but deep the story of it yeah it was a prophet's wife am I right I believe so okay so I believe it was a prophet's wife and they were in a desert or something like that and obviously desert no water so praying to god saying can you give us some water please yeah so water's come out of the desert now yeah yeah that's god knows how many years ago that is like yeah. thousands and thousands yeah that same place is still producing water today it, dry, it won't dry up it's not drying up but well, as in how is it producing water though and no one knows no but i mean as in what in the middle of a desert yeah no one knows. And where is the water coming from? The desert. No, but explain it to me. In the the, no, it can't be explained. No, no, no. I mean, is in there's a desert, yeah? yeah? Where is the water? Just in the middle of the desert. Well, now they've got like... like Tubes and pipes because yeah, 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 yeah. they've got tubes and pipes, but it's come from the middle of the desert. Well, and it's just, clean. It's never... It, and you, you it, it's not going? No. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, naturally, when you have water and stuff, you get fungi and certain, like, bacteria. That this has been clean. It's never been polluted. And how, mu- how big is it? Uh, I actually haven't been there, but it's deep, you just YouTube it, man. It's different now because now they've got proper chains, cha- chambers and stuff, and they like serve it to everyone at the Mahrum. The Mahrum. Where is it? Yeah. Mahrum, Mahrum. Saudi. Serious? Yeah. yeah. Google it, bro. We'll YouTube it, bro. You'll be fascinated. Look, look, look now. Hold on. Let me see this. This was mad, didn't it? To think like that, like water well essentially is still running from the test of time, essentially. It's just another. Yeah. It's just another. It's another just another, miracle, another, another it? sign, bro. Another blessing from Allah, bro. Yeah. Let me see this now. Hold on. This. That might be it. Maybe I'm not sure. Just I think they built around it and stuff like that now as well. Yeah, it's now in a mosque. What are you saying, Ty? Should we uh, scare Mike you with some uh, your George and Majul stories and all of that oh, stuff? Oh no, no, no! It's too early. Don't <laughs> too really, early, don't give it. No. Go, I, go, I, I can't go. wait for the days when I'm when I'm telling you all that stuff. You know that. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna, gonna be that. shit yeah, yeah yeah don't tell him cause I can't get bigger bro yeah I know I know <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gonna be jokes <laughs> check this then yeah put this right, on camera put this on camera <laughs> <laughs> this is mad this only happened to me a couple of months ago maddest thing ever so. gin story I don't even know what it was blood but check this I'm in bed yeah and I'm agitated in my sleep I can't sleep like I'm agitated like I don't know they're just setting up with me yeah and I'm agitated, so I'm like, I'm kind of like, I kind of like woke up now and I'm yeah, just like facing, I'm like, because I sleep on my sides, so I'm like facing my wall. I was like, <sighs> I said like, turn over, like, I felt like a presence, I've turned over, 
Wallahi, mate, I swear by Allah, what I'm telling you, I'm a, I'm, this isn't a dream, I'm awake. I swear by Allah, what I'm telling you, is facts. I've rolled over and I imagine like a hologram of a person, but it's real. It's there in my room. I'm looking at him, he's looking at me. I swear on anything, on the Quran, anything, yeah? He's looking at me, I'm looking at him. Probably. And he's like, he's like in like a human form, but he looks like dirty. And like behind him, you can tell he's not from this world. He's like from somewhere, he's like just dark and what's the name? And he's trying to get to me. And for some reason, I wasn't even shook. I just remember thinking, I've got a law. What can you do to me? That's mm. what I remember thinking. Straight. And he's trying to get to me. And I'm just saying, Awadu Billah. Awadu Billah Imani Shaitan Rajim. Awadu Billah Imani Shaitan Rajim. Which means I seek refuge in Allah from the curse Satan. So that's what I'm saying, yeah? I'm saying that. And then like, he's like, tried to get to me. He can't get to me. He's like, I feel like he was trying to come to me. But I'm saying that. So Allah's saying, yeah, you ain't can't get to him, bro. Do you know what I mean? And then like, he's like, turn round. And then like, look back. And then boom, he just disappeared. Mm. So I'm thinking like, I remember always asking Allah for like to strengthen my Iman, yeah? From then, I know there's an other realms of life because I've seen it and it wasn't a dream. So I tell you, I know it wasn't a dream because as soon as it disappeared, I got up out of my bed, I want to go in the shower, come back and pray for Fajr straight away. So it wasn't a dream because I see it, I was awake, I want to shower. Do, do men that sleep shower and pray? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. From then, it was just like Allah to say, after that, I said, there's not, I, was, I knew, I knew, now I'm convinced. I know that there's afterlife because I've seen it with my own two eyes. I've had a, a, a madness, yeah, twice in my life, essentially. Once when I was like, I must have been five years old in my old house in, I used to live in East Ham. Um, basically, I was like five years old or something like that. I remember my mum, this was like... You was five years old. old. Yeah, I was five years old at the time. I remember this clearly, yeah. My mum, uh, this is like three in the morning. My mum's coming to my room now and she's like, Raheem, I'm going down. Do you want milk or something like that? So I'm like, yeah, cool. She goes, all right, cool, come down. And you so, remember this from five? I remember this clearly, as day. like yeah? clear as day, like it was yesterday. Yeah, so I've gone down the stairs, um, looked over the banisters, and no one's there. It's pitch black. So I'm like, yo, where's my mum? So I've looked over the banisters, and basically, if you look where my banisters are, you can see straight through to the kitchen, and where the kitchen is, there's another door, which is the toilet. Um, bro, that door opened, yeah. Big, big, um, like, big black figure comes out, essentially, yeah, and just looks directly at me, starts walking and shit. I was like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Run back upstairs to my parents' room, yeah, they're both in bed chilling. So I'm like, mum, you were downstairs, what are you talking about? Like, she was like, no, we've been here the whole time. Oh, shit, shitting bricks. And then later on in life, only five. You definitely slept in your mum and dad's bed that night, didn't you? Huh? You definitely slept in your mum and dad's bed that yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, they're 100%, bro. <laughs> but, um, and then um, um, before my grandma passed away, she was telling me and my cousin, um, basically, before that room was the toilet, that used to be a spare bedroom where we used to live, yeah? So whenever my, my auntie and my grandma used to stay around, my grandma basically used to feel something strangling her and whatnot. So that it's basically so confirmed it there and then it was fucked. Yeah. Another time is I went, uh, have you heard of a place called Centre Parks? Yeah. 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 So I've been Centre Parks with my boys and that year. Um, don't get me wrong. We, we weren't up to any good at the same time. <laughs> yeah. But we were riding bikes around like four in the morning, something like that. But I remember all the street lights went off here. Um, and then we were just like, what the fuck? Like, they literally all blacked out just like that. And then fucking... I the, the direction that we were riding in, there's just like a black figure in the middle of the road. Like, when I say tall, I'm talking like, must have been like 12 foot tall or something yeah. like that. So we were just d deep in all that, what the fuck? And, all and that you stuff. all saw it? Yeah, we all saw it, pretty much, yeah. But the thing is, like, we were fucked because we were high. So, <laughs> so we were like, what the fuck do we do? So obviously we just turned around and tried jetting it and whatnot. And I just, gee, I just remember that. Did like everyone that. see the same thing? Everyone saw the same thing, yeah, 100%. Everyone saw the same thing. Yeah. Because we got back to the lodge after and we were like, yo, what the fuck was that? And all that sort of stuff. We tried our best somehow to sober up and just do wudu and, and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just mad. But yeah, when you see shit too. like that, you can't go back. But if you got a man and stuff like that, if I saw something like that today, I probably wouldn't be as scared because I know the situation. Because everyone said, like, you should be dead, shock of black magic and they can do this and that. And yeah, you should be, but I don't know. For me, maybe I'm. Well, black magic's a fucked one, bro. <laughs> yeah, but you see what it is? Like, stuff like that. Maybe I've just not got enough knowledge, but I just think, what can black magic do to me? I've got the greatest of creation. Mm. You know what I mean? Uncreated, that's stuck for Allah. I mean, I've got the greatest. I'm not. I'm not anything else from Allah is created. Mm. So, why am I going to be scared of the created when, I, when I've got the creator? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, what can you do true. to me? That's like someone coming. That's like someone bringing, I don't know. A Flintstone to me, and I've got Mike Tyson. What are you gonna do? There's a eight, there's a guy that weighs about eight stone, and yeah. I've got Mike Tyson behind me. 
What am I going to be scared of you for? And yeah. Allah's even bigger. Allah's, you can't even comprehend how big Allah. What can this black magic do to me? No, but you know what black magic is though, essentially, isn't it? Rewriting God's will. Which yeah, is... but that's only if God allows it though. God, the only way you can rewrite God's will if it's God wills it. 100%, but it's working with obviously Shaitan and the devil. Yeah, but the like Shaitan ain't bigger than God. God is, if no, no, if no, God don't want that to happen, the only reason, the only way black magic can happen to you is if God allows it, bro. Yeah. That's no matter what it is, the, the whole of Jin kind can come against me and plot against me. If Allah says, no, what are you going to do to me, bro? Yeah. You can't do nothing. Nothing happens without the permission of Allah. This is what you got to forget. Fuck your black magic, bro. I ain't scared about your black magic. And I shouldn't say this. Maybe it'll come back to bite me. But the way I think it is, I've got Allah, bro. He's you protecting you. No, no, I've got, the, no, be- I've got the best security guard in, a, in existence. Yeah, because essentially, jinns, humans, a- any species of creation there is, Everyone worships Allah. Yeah, obviously, all, all come from Allah. Yeah, all come from Allah. All worship Allah. Jinns live the same life we live. So obviously, you get good ones, you get bad yeah, ones, yeah. or whatnot. But everyone at the end of the day worships Allah. So everything's got to run by Allah. Exactly. The, but right. anything that happens, if I pick this, my keys up and throw them now, it's by the will of Allah. If I, if Allah says I wouldn't will me to it, there's no way I can pick them. Them, it's impossible. Mm. So no matter what happens, if a jinn's coming to me and I, I wants to do bad to me, the only way it can happen, I'm not saying it can't happen, and jinn possession and all this. But it's only by the will of Allah, bro. Mm. So that's what Allah wills, he wills. But if he, if he doesn't, you ain't doing nothing to me. You and your black magic, man. Go bury your bones and shit in the ground, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to phase you. Yeah, Mike, you just got to keep the iman. The, keep, keep the, the demon you. No, 100%. 100%. be good. But yeah, man, that's uh, Islam. I can't wait to tell you the the deep stories yeah, no, you can tell me them you can tell me them off camera right now that's a bit that's a we'll bit do yeah. the God, we'll do the juju like uh, okay. give him a year at least. yeah give me a bit of time what no, what don't tell you that yeah, don't, no no don't tell him don't tell him that one no no give no, no that's what i'm saying yeah i won't tell you now <laughs> yeah no, no 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 don't tell me don't tell me it's not it's it's good to have knowledge on it but yeah i don't need to know it right now yeah, like, no, right, no, no. right now let me i'm yeah, actually I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a good path at the minute let me yeah, stick yeah, to my yeah, good yeah, path yeah. I'm, I'm happy i'm enjoying it at the moment yeah do you want a bit more water no 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 good boy. sure i yeah. uh, just remember yeah if, if you see a guy that comes up to you with a fucked up eye <laughs> and it says kufar on the forehead yeah don't believe him yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you talk to me Oh yeah, he'll yeah. talk to you, bro. He'll try if you see someone with a dodgy eye, yeah. and just like protruding, looks like a grape, sort of hanging out and that, yeah. and you say the word kufar and he said yeah, and he told you something, he's just. No, and just like, what, what would he tell me? Uh, he will tell you just. He will tell you mad shit. Yeah, just yeah. don't believe him, bro. Yeah, yeah. Why? Have you experienced it yourself? <laughs> no, no one's experienced no it one's yet. Yeah, when you experience it, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know. I'll be sure. Ah, it's time. <laughs> What do you mean no one's experienced it? Bro, I'll be running, bro. One minute, one minute, one minute. What do you mean no one's experienced it? Don't worry, man. You'll work out, man. We'll tell you another day. We'll tell you another exactly. Let's we'll put a whole different podcast, man. Yeah, you're fresh into it as long. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Loud, bro. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to enjoy my shit, bro. Like, what's going on? Everyone's here brilliant me and shit. No, I was going to say, well, any, any final notes, basically? What's Ty doing nowadays, bro? Getting ready for his fight. Ready to make the... Moolah. Big comeback. So... I'm not, there's a couple of days I might be fighting abroad in October or something. Hopefully I'll be fighting in England before the end of the year, inshallah. I'm just trying to just come back, man. I've not got a long career left. You signed to anyone? No, but I've got, I can, I've got a lot of good offers on the table. Okay. Um, we've all the top promoters, so, or most of them anyway, so. Have you even covered the fact that you were sparring with AJ? <laughs> yeah. Go on, what's that, how did that come about? Did you drop him? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, My God, you drop AJ. I've spot- AJ versus Usyk. Who's winning? I, I swear you spotted Tyson Fury as well, isn't it? Yeah, I spotted Tyson. Bad time. You're going there next week, right? boy, though. Yeah, I'm going to his on Tuesday. Tomorrow. What is it tomorrow? I'm going to Tuesday. Monday. Where are you going to win Tuesday? Just to his yard. Swear down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like that. That's my bridge, you know, isn't it? Okay. That, that, he's actually my dog. Like We're not training parts. Me and AJ were cool and that, but that was like business. Tyson's actually my dog. So, how did you meet these lot? <laughs> yeah, how did you beat Tyson? Um, I knew him from years ago, and then I come out of jail. Literally, been out of jail like three weeks. I went abroad to train with him because I know him for his uncle Peter who used to train him. Went abroad to do a training camp with him. I sparred him. The first time I sparred him, I gave him a black eye, <laughs> and they just rated for me from there. We're very similar mentally. How with a lot of certain things, we're very similar um, beings. Trained with him all his camp for the Klitschko fight, beat Klitschko, and then we just kept rolling after like. And then now we've been friends for years, and we just. So what Tyson's saying at the minute? He's saying he'll fight AJ for free. Is he that real made, or is he just... Yeah, he just makes stuff for it to him. He changes his mind every day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go on. What's, what's next for you then? Yeah, I'm just trying to um, get my license. Um, well, I've got a license now. I'm just trying to get a different... Uh, I'm just trying to sort my British license. So I'm just trying to just have a good career, man. Try and um, let people learn from my mistakes. 
not go through the things and make the mistakes I did in life. Let my le- lesson be a lesson to you. I don't want you to have to learn the hard way like I did. Um, I just spread some positivity in the world, man. Put some good back into the world, man. Be nice to people. Sh- shed a positive light on Islam and the mainstream media. I think I think Islam's de- nowhere near as feared like it used to be with all the Muslim footballers, Khabib. Just, yeah, Khabib. just just social media in general. I feel like when they only had the news, that's all they had, but now they've got social media. Khabib put a massive light on uh, Islam. Yeah, yes. yeah, and Mo Salah. Yeah, and I Mo Salah. I Khabib's speech at, um, what was it, the UFC Awards or something like that? Like yeah, 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 yeah. I heard it? that way. It's like, oh, people say, oh, I did good because I trained hard and this yeah, and that. Yeah, forget Allah. Yeah, That's basically. Yeah, like, true, yeah, first of all, I say, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put that on my story. Yeah, I'll put that on my story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, man, I just, yeah, just try and make a success out of my life in the boxing game, man. Try and just get some fights and just jump on a big stage and get it What are you, middleweight? Super middleweight. So we're looking at super middleweight world champion, yeah? It's future, inshallah. Inshallah. It's not meant to be as written anyway, so what will be, I can only try my best and what will be, will be, you get it. That's what I'm not really bothered, man. Like, I can only train my hardest, try my best, and if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be, I'm doing live away. Maybe, you see what it is, this is what I say to people. Even if I don't even be able to box properly ever again on the big stage, it still wouldn't bother me so much. Like, I'd be upset, like, I'm down and stuff, but maybe if I don't, the only reason it's not is because Allah saved me from something. Maybe I could get successful and it could take me away from the deen. Maybe the money could get to my head and I end up going wild and forgetting about the deen. Or maybe mm. it could do the opposite. You know what I mean? Maybe mm. it could make me even more religious. You never know. Whatever happens, happens by the will of Allah. So I'm happy, man, with whatever Allah has planned for me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So yeah, that's it, man. Well, Mikey, it's your podcast. It's time to wrap it up, Geese. Whoa. I felt geezer. Listen, so, obviously, let me, let me just say, brother, it felt very good just being stepped back from CEO cost, you know. <laughs> Did it actually? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're chilling there, just kicking chillin out, bro. I yeah. ain't even going to edit this. That's the best bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, listen, thank you for coming on. That's the main thing, because obviously... Thanks for coming on. It's my first one. Yeah. So, so right, when this does well, right now, I started this. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of me. So when you make it, when you when it blows, yeah, and you're making good money, I'm gonna come for my check. Yeah, brother, <laughs> brother, <laughs> brother <laughs> come on, <laughs> Islam, brother in Islam, give me money now. Where's the, the whole, pesa, brother? Whole blue tick podcast sponsored by Time. <laughs> yeah, sponsored by Time. Yeah. Yeah. No, but listen, genuinely, thanks for coming on. No, I'm glad good. we've shared your story and everyone gets to hear it now. Obviously, you've done other podcasts and stuff, but I hope our one comes off in a different way. We spoke a lot about religion, which in the others, I don't think you did pick up much on. I have another podcast about, it's purely about religion, but then if not, it's picked up on what other stuff, so I feel like it's got a good blend of the yeah. two. Well, listen, that's pretty much it. Yeah. What are we saying? Thousand likes, first episode. Thousand subscribers, all of that. Thousand likes, thousand subscribers. Oh, okay. can we could do Make that? an incentive for people, innit? Obviously, you're on Melon, bruv. Come on. Right, so what should I say? Thousand subscribers, thousand likes... No, my real talks. No, 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 no. Thousand. Give someone a free meal, innit? I'm, I'm not being cocky, but this podcast has done well. Like, I, I'm saying 5,000 likes. Bomba Clark. Five, that's good, bro. That's good numbers. Good numbers. For five, first podcast. Yeah. First, first video I, on the channel. Yeah, yeah, I believe you, my people. <laughs> okay. 5,000 likes and. Uh, I don't know. What should we say? Free meal at Melon, bro. You're on the fucking restaurant. Yeah, who pick, how do I pick the winner? Comment. Comment your best bit. Where's the camera? Yeah, camera? Comment, your, camera comment your best bit. Of this podcast. Of this podcast, 5,000 likes and you get a free meal at Melon. Sorry, Dad. Just give it away, free meal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you all for watching.